Yeah, right on. Queen was right. They just rocked us. This was the sped up version of We Will Rock You. A little ditty that I think would have been better served that way than that slow bump. Yeah, yeah there's more rock. Yeah, more rock and less uh, less ability to be at a football game. More rock, less talk. Oh, boy. There's that rock voice that she does. <laughs> She's ready. She's ready to do the 90s channel. I believe, if they need someone. <laughs> uh, I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. Uh. And I'm Ron Bennington. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the uh, deal, folks. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just made their nominees again today. If there's anything more controversial than Clinton Trump or Trump Quint- Clinton, it is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame balloting. Uh, if you want to get in on this, Chris is going to read us off the list. I, for one haven't seen these yet give us a call at 844 rock god 844 rock god because i've got a i think something that would make it more fun i think once kiss got in there was less for us to fight about every year yeah that was that was fun that was a long time i would like to tell this the rock and roll hall of fame you you uh vote people in but every year we take one person out of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, <laughs> hey, we've had a little time to look at this. <laughs> I don't know if they belong. I think that would work. All right, 844 Rock God, 844 Rock God, because this sounds like a volume break today, you know? Yeah. This sounds like debatable when they were debating Rock yesterday. Jack. Who would be, uh, I was listening, who would be at the, uh, Old Cella 2? <laughs> Old Cella 2. I'm screaming at my, I'm screaming. I go, you got to go put back uh, the talking heads, mm-hmm. and you got to put back together police, and people would sleep in the desert for that, I believe. I would. To see the talking heads, I've always wanted to see the talking heads. The original talking heads, not yeah. the crazy, hey, there's 15 of us. Mm-mm, no. OG. Oh, foe. Just foe there. Uh, anybody else that you put in that? Uh, who else would You'd be- sleep in the desert to see this classic person doing classic stuff? I would probably, even though I've seen them before, I would sleep in the desert to see Fleetwood Mac perform in the desert. I would go original Fleetwood Mac with Peter Green. You know, before <laughs> really? yeah, before they picked up the California sound. <laughs> okay. All right, Chris is going to read us off the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees. Some of these people are first ballot. Some of them, there's Fido waves to everybody. <laughs> You've got so many friends in the He's building. He's friendly. You know? No, that, guy, that guy's real cool. We're, that guy. Lord Lord Sears the man. I love that okay, guy. Okay, use his name. But you think that everybody's real cool and everybody's the man. You can sit down. You don't have to stand up. You're not under fire here. <laughs> it's not like you came up with where does the sky start. <laughs> this is going to be an easy first break for you. No sweating. No, I got stuck under a wire. So. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what's going on he's, there? He's giving me NBA 2K for free. He's, uh, uh-huh. he's, he's a big clumsy guy and he does a lot of big clumsy things. But he's friends with everybody. Lovable. Yeah, Yeah. he really is lovable. All right, 844 Rock God for this. Chris, give us the name, and we will say a yay or nay if they belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam has got to be first ballot, right? I'm going to say yay. Of course, of course they go in first. (laughs) What about my theory? Is we just tried Pearl Jam one show with a singer who can enunciate. That might be <laughs> exciting. Maybe that's what they've been missing all these years. Yeah. Like the kid that Queen took around with them from uh, from American Idol. Adam Lambert. Okay, maybe an yeah, Adam Lambert. That'd be good. And then I'll be like, oh, that's what happened. If I got an Adam Lambert, you Don't call me daughter. What? Did he say, don't call me daughter? Huh? Why mm. would anyone say that to you? I think so. Pearl Jam? <laughs> All right, so Pearl Jam is a first ballot. We agree, right? I think, yeah. That's I mean, Nir- Nirvana went per- first ballot. Yeah, then Pearl Jam. And people too. don't like to hear this, but I'm just going to say the truth because I was alive in the 90s. Pearl Jam was a bigger band than Nirvana. Yeah. They the, sold I mean, they more, more records. They More people came out to them. Not oh. came out to them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that way. so open and (laughs) accepting. I'm gay (laughs) during the show, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of my gayness. (laughs) Now, Pearl Jam has done one of the few, no other band has ever really pulled this off, where you go from being the biggest band in the world, and they were, 
to being a cult band like Fish, yeah. where the same people go to every show with you. And it's just them jamming out and people going over their set lists. Yeah, it's it's weird. They would have, it looked like they were going to be you too, where everybody would just say, oh, I like that band. I like you too. They're nice. <laughs> They're, They're nice enough. They're nice. They're good. You know, moms could sing along and the kids and dad. And you know what? There might even be a little something there for grandpa and grandma. Everybody might like them. All right. They are uh, a, a lock for a spell. It. Who you got? Tupac Shakur. All right. I always, tell, yeah. always controversial when a, a, a rap or hip hop artist gets but put up. If you're going to put in any hip hop artist, any rapper into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you got to put Tupac into the mix. If you already have a loud hip hop, if you're already saying the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame also includes hip hop, you yeah. can't just do it sometimes. You've got no. to go across the board. All Who's the, the first big uh, hip hop act that went in? By the way, you can follow along on this on the Interra Bank today, on the iBank. Uh, and I know I have friends who say, no rappers, this is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But that thing's been broken. It's already happened. It, it exists. Already, yeah. There should also be a hip hop. Hall of Fame. I'm probably going to start it with two other guys. <laughs> the, the two other guys? Who? RZA. All right. Okay, cool. And Chuck D. And when the three of us talk, people pay attention. <laughs> I ain't saying that they pay attention to all three of us the same way. But as a whole, they pay attention to us. Um, yeah. Uh, Tupac belongs there. Now, here's like, a, I'm going to put an asterisk on this and say, I was in Vegas at a fight. The week before Tupac got killed, so I always feel oh that special God. connection. Yeah, like the nine eleven people who said I was just in there. That's you. A week before, you could have been Tupac. I could have been driving Tupac and survived. <laughs> um, I, I also have this thing about Tupac, and I'm just going to say it. He was getting better all the time. I think to the, by if he was still alive, we'd be calling him either Four Pac or Eight Pac to this very day. <laughs> I love that man. <laughs> He's your favorite. Well, I, I was always like a biggie guy, but then I watched all these documentaries East on yeah. East Coast, you know, Beast. on Tupac. But he was one of the most charismatic dudes ever. Just watching his interviews, it, yeah. just, it was fucking amazing. Um, I see him more as a Fat Joe. I love, uh, I love to lean back. <laughs> I know you're always leaning back. That's my dance. But uh, a buddy of mine was in the Digital Underground that Tupac was in and out of, and this buddy awesome. of mine was in and out of it as well. Um, S Flipper, next time you talk to him, okay. he'll give you all the, the <laughs> facts and background facts and stuff like I'll text that. Text him later today. Um, hey, Jim in Florida. Jim. Van Dyke Parks should be in as a non performer. He's a great lyricist, worked with uh, Brian Wilson, other people. He also could play just about every instrument, right? Yeah. I think he played on, and I might be wrong, but on Good Vibrations, he played the, <laughs> that weird thing yeah. that you. That sounds like a saw, just like. Yeah, but I think it's something that you play with electricity. Oh, is it the ther theremin? I'll say yes to that, because I don't know. It might I think have it's made that flow. Work. At least that's what I had. <laughs> I might have just um, made up that. See, I, I agree. I think people like that belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, but. You have to also admit that it's gone beyond the critical love for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And yeah. It became about how many albums did you sell. All right, give me the next one. Depeche Mode. I couldn't keep them out. I love Depeche Mode. So uh, it's an obvious yay for Chris? me. Chris? Yeah, you got to keep Depeche Mode in there. All right, so we're saying yes to everybody right <laughs> Not, now. There's a lot more names. Okay, because right now it seems to me like there's a lot of yeses. It's three, those are three strong ones. I'm right, not so, going to be the one to say no. I know, but there's <laughs> only, what, five slots every year that go in or something like that? So we just filled three. <laughs> yeah, that's that's trouble. <laughs> okay. All right, next is the Electric Light Orchestra, ELO. Oh. Well, we just played them yesterday, Yeah, which is enough of a reason. <laughs> yeah. So that's four, yeah, yay. As no one is against the LO, right? No, I'm not. I would, I would LO? never be against the LO. They're the best. Ever. Uh, Jay, Jay in Connecticut, what's up? What's up, buddies? Hey. Uh, I just had this argument with a buddy of mine the other day. Good. I think that Bad Company should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, first of all, one of the great rock singers of all time, a, a band that right. was big. 
from their first album. And they did something that, as you know, I love more than anything else. The album, uh, the band, Mm -hmm. and the song are all called Bad Company. Across so you, the board. You, across the board, you've taken every, you've <laughs> taken over everything. It's all bad company. But here's what maybe keep them in the mouth: the song "Shooting Star." <laughs> <It could be>. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know that you are a shooting star? But yeah, if they were up there, they'd have a hard time saying no to bad company. Uh, all right, but who do we got? So we've already put in four. Yeah, four of the five. Jane's addiction. Jane's addiction absolutely belongs in the Hall of Fame. A, great band, charismatic lead singer, and a little thing called Lollapalooza, ladies and gentlemen. Lollapalooza. Or did you forget? Yeah, maybe you forgot, Planet Earth. You pieces of shit. All right, Chris. (laughs) We don't want to offend Earth. That's the way Donald Trump refers to people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like Trump. (laughs) I don't want to be like that guy. That's the exact opposite of a Michael Jordan commercial. (laughs) Trump, I don't want to be like Trump. (laughs) I saw Melania on, who I adore. Yeah. And she said, she basically blamed it on that Billy Bush, pushing <laughs> Donald into that kind of talk. Yeah. He got in with the wrong crowd. He, he ran really with the wrong crowd. What happens to good boys sometimes. Yes. He was trying to impress <laughs> Billy Bush. The Bushman. <laughs> the Bushy. Oh, yeah. That's his actual nickname, Bushy. <laughs> I'm going to hug for the Bushy. <laughs> So Jane's addiction is in as well. So, so we're, we're five for we're five. F- close this thing down. <laughs> uh, Mike in Canada. Yeah, Ronnie. Hey, uh, I'm thinking Little Feet deserves to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I- Wall George was an amazing songwriter, a killer slide guitar player, uh, and just six or seven albums that are classics from back in the 70s, man. First of all, I didn't know that they weren't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm actually surprised by that. It's a crime that they're not in. And also, great album covers. I always like a distinctive album cover where you say, oh, oh, I haven't even seen this yet, but I know it's a Little Feet album. I get Little Feet and Small Faces confused all the time. Uh, It's a, well... (laughs) It's a body part that's petite. <laughs> so that could happen. Uh, 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. Unfortunately, we've already put in five and we're closing this thing down. I guess we're done. There's 14 more acts. Though. Okay, what? let's just try. All right, Janet Jackson. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Mm-hmm. She's pregnant. We can't disappoint her. Um, not only is she pregnant, she took the full heat for that halftime show. When the other kid got away with everyone, the right. one who exposed her JT metallic breast, yeah. yeah, her pierced nipple. I don't think it was pierced. I think that thing was on the outside of her nipple. Yeah, it was I think a- there was a pierced nipple holding that thing together, though. I remember the, seeing the close-ups of it. Really? Who? Where did you get the close-ups? At? <laughs> oh, I, I forgot. Fappening. <laughs> I Love forgot. It. You're always waiting for people's phones <laughs> to be tapped into. Love the cloud gang hacked. Oh, uh, Rhythm Nation goes in for me. Janet Jackson belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, if you're nasty, then yeah, yeah put her in the Rock and Roll Hall of I'll Fame. I'll say this. Which I am. She was better than most of her brothers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Only Michael and Tremaine, I would say, above her. Not Randy and Tino? No, she's she's before Tito, for sure. Now, Tito, is he the guy who came up with his own vodka? Was yeah. that Tito Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> From Austin. Janet Jackson goes in. Anybody got a beef with that? I like Janet Jackson. I, I, I think that she goes in. Right, I don't so know. So we're plus one right now. So we're going to have to make some room. Journey. Oh, I'll be first. They're out. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, we can wait on Journey, can't we? Can I tell you something? I stopped believing, and I'll leave it at that. I mean, I think that we could maybe wait for, like, another turn or two. Like, don't you go back into the mix? It's not like you get one shot. Apparently, Journey's been in the mix for quite a few years. Well, yeah. I think they're fine to wait. Um, They have the Filipino singer now, which made their band better than Steve Perry. He belongs to go in. <laughs> That any of great. <laughs> if we put him in as a solo act, <laughs> Journey is one of those bands. Like there are songs by them that I really like, and they're never the ones that the other people like. You know what I mean? Like I think Lights is a great song, yeah, but that Don't Stop Believing it just drives me nuts. People fucking love that song. I don't really like seeing their joy. Is like most of my problem with this song. The, you mean the fans? Joy. Yeah, like their joy when they hear it. Yeah. Oh, I know this from TV. They yell out. <laughs> Um, I'm not saying never. I'm just saying I don't think it's a priority for me. We have, uh, what about for you, Chris? 
Journey song? No. Are you in or out for voting for Journey? I can't vote for Journey. Okay, but look, this is not the way voting takes place. <laughs> look, we just all agreed on the same thing, and yet it's a fight when you say it. I don't mean to fight. What you have to do is just give your vote. Not act like I've asked you a question you don't want to answer. You fuck. <laughs> How could you ask me that? Voting for Journey? The cars. So Journey is an 0 for 3. Yeah. Um, cars are 100 percent for me. That it's so much 100 percent that I'm bumping Janet if if it's needed. Wow! And she can Whoa. she can wait till next time. Chris, you have to give a vote now. Vote yes. Okay, okay. Just, I am I'm not a dentist, so I don't want to pull teeth in here. But unfortunately, I started this as you're the third vote, <laughs> and there's a lag time that takes okay. place with you where you forget what voting is about. <laughs> Um, but you're in for the cars. Yeah, I'm in for the cars. Okay. So we've got seven right now. Seven <laughs> of the eight are going in. The zombies. Time of the season? Yeah, man. Yeah. Love that song. Yeah. yeah. And the great Rod Argent. And well, that this might be the best year of our life or whatever. Oh, that's Love some, that yeah, song. Yeah, that's a, that is a good song. Yes, for the zombies. Okay. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> yes. The band. Yes? I can't believe Yes is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I have a giant yes for yes. They have a beef against Prog Rock at the Rolling Stone? Very big beef. Matter of fact, even the people who enjoyed Prog Rock, most of them are now anti-Prog Rock because it it seems just too big, did, too lumbering. Did not age well? Um, you know, it was a time and a place. But the thing is, these were like almost too good of musicians going for a classical sound rather than a classic rock sound. But I've seen Yes. I've had a great time. Uh, most people can sing off 10 or 12 Yes songs if it comes up. Yeah. They had that great thing where the that you could sit and just draw Chocolate. Yes <laughs> on your yeah, on funny. your notebook instead of paying attention to anything. Yes. I tried I handed that in as a test once. Count me in yay for Yes. Yes to Yes. Yes to Yes. Quick that time. Bad brains. Uh, hold on, we're nine out of ten. Bad brains. Bad brains. First ballot, yes for me. Yeah. Yeah, of course. How could you not put bad brains in? All right, I I he just does did it every time. He gets I, away. Chris, I don't want to fight with you, but I <laughs> said yeah. We're all agreeing. We haven't had one that we uh, other Ken. than I bumped. Ken. Hey, hey, Ron. How you doing? Hey, good, buddy. Hey, listen, as a proud son of Pennsylvania, you have to be appalled by the fact that Todd Rundgren is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. A hundred percent. He belongs there give... for singer, songwriter, arranger, producer. He's one of the most genius people in the rock genre. As a small child, yeah. I, I loved his voice so much, and I actually thought for a very long time, Todd Rundgren was a woman because he has such a beautiful, like, he does have a beautiful gentle voice. voice. And I was shocked to find out he was actually a man. And what a man at that. What a man, what a man, what a man. Matt, Connecticut. Hey, have a green day. You're going to be so happy to know that they went in last year, I believe. Are you serious? Yeah, I think green day's in, right? I don't know. I can't really? remember if that happened. Well, you got to be around for 25 years from the from your first album. And I believe they went in. Am I crazy when I said uh, that? They went in. Yeah, they're already there. So You're thrilled right now. Yeah, you got to be going out of your mind and then wondering, how did I miss that show last year? 844 Rock God. You can go and check these all out on the iBank today, too. Chris, what do you got? Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Ooh, yay. Shaka Khan. Yes, um, absolutely. Shaka Khan. I don't see a big deal about Shaka Khan. She can wait. Wait for what? For what? Rufus to get older and die? A couple, another couple of years. It's fine. So we do it like if it isn't 100%, they don't go in? I guess not. So you just kept Shaka you just, Khan out. You just... <laughs> Sorry, Shaka Khan. But I That's feel to up. you, because I love you. When people were writing Shaka Khan into their songs, and Shaka Khan had nothing to do with it, I mean, something good is happening there. <laughs> But Hall of Fame good? Yes, what? better than Hall of Fame. I wish there was a Super Hall of Fame I'd put Shaka Khan into. I'm going to send you home with a bunch of Shaka Khan <laughs> albums. Fine. Sheik. Now, Sheik has been nominated every year for 15 years. Really? And haven't gotten in. 
It's kind of fun to keep them out. <laughs> but Chic, absolutely. I mean, all you've got to do is go to the 80s and hear how many bands sounded like Chic. Were, were they at the beginning of that sound? Like, were they yes. one of the first? Yes. It's that, that happy guitar. Yeah. Yes, 100% to Chic. Because he's done our show so many times. Now Rogers is the man. I love him. He is, and he went on and produced other people. And every time he produces, he goes in and just adds like a chic, yeah, just guitar great. riff. And everyone's like, oh, I love this song. <laughs> but Nile Rogers is, I would say this, maybe the best human being on the planet today. <laughs> and I'm not even making that up. He is so sweet and so kind and filled with goodness and does like most of his shows are some kind of charity. But when he walks into the room, man, the light goes on. He's just amazing. But 15 years? Now, Sheik is one of those bands, and um, Black Eyed Peas is another example, where you go from the biggest band in the world to the following every day, everyone goes, we don't like them. Oh, they hate that Black Eyed Peas got. It happened to Peter Frampton, too, in the 70s. I think, the biggest album. I think that you could have a wedding or a dance party and play exclusively Sheik, and everyone would be fine with it. I didn't know there was anything else to play. That's all you, go that all you need. Yeah. And anyone who calls chic, chick, <laughs> get you out. shouldn't even be voting. Get out. Put him down. <laughs> that's too far, Why? Chris. Why is it too far? Because that's murder. Uh, David, Santa Cruz. David. Ronnie, what's going on? The replacements in yet? The replacements, as far as I know, are still not in. Not in. They would be first ballot for me. Um, sure. But no, they did not make it. Mainly uh, because thanks, I believe they drank too much. <laughs> I'm saying a lot for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Do you ever hear what they did at the uh, when they were on the uh, SNL? No. So they come out, and they, they, you can watch this online. I mean, they're just fucking killing it. But they're drunk off their ass. But they're just killing it. So in between their, sh their songs, they went into the back room, and they weren't destroying the dressing room, which they did. They all changed clothes and came out wearing each other's clothes. <laughs> As some kind of a drunk joke that America didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was great. So, yeah, they would go in for me. Jay Giles Band. Jay Giles Band, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, it was the single greatest live band I've ever seen in my life. The single greatest front man. Yes, Mick Jagger, you heard what I just said to you. <laughs> He's the single greatest live front man bruce springsteen this is for you the jay giles band with peter wolf was the single greatest live band i've ever seen with the single greatest front man i've said it and i want this on record for the rock and roll hall of fame when i walk into cleveland i want to see everything that i said etched in stone there with shocked pictures of mick jagger and bruce springsteen <laughs> both like what what and me just like knowing like i'm having a knowing look and i'm pointing at them <laughs> can we do that uh yes and please send that audio over to the rock and roll hall of fame pull that veto and vote yes you're voting yes chris yeah I'm voting yes oh, okay, okay so you backed it's not out a shock. shock a con situation <laughs> oh. you fucking sexist <laughs> he is racist he, he calls shock both he calls shock a con the hillary of rock and roll. Unbelievable. That, was that offends me, me twice <laughs> over. Then he also called her Killery because of what happened. Yeah. She doesn't even care. <laughs> Next nominee, Joan Baez. Joan Baez, I'm going to tell you this. You dated um, Bob Dylan. You went out on the road playing barefoot. But really, no one else behind you. <laughs> you know, you were there for the migrant workers and the grape pickers and whoever else needed your help. I'm saying yes to Joan Baez. Yeah. Jo Joan Baez is definitely yes for me, too. No to Joan Baez. She can wait another couple of years. Oh, oh, oh my God. He can hates I, women. Can I be uh, honest I about this? Yes. Women. She doesn't have another couple of years. She's she, getting older. One more year, then. Just, you know, I want to get the zombies in there. I'm not taking out my zombie vote. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. Yay. <laughs> Rod Argent, I'm sorry to you, my and friend. Tell me I love you. What other artists are most important to you? Anything that you care about. <laughs> I'm going to hurt them. <laughs> um, and then say, this is for Joan and Shaka. Hey, Jay, North Carolina. Hey, uh, 
Another Woodstock person uh, that's not in there is Joe Cocker. And I always wondered why. What do you think it is? Well, uh, I think maybe his gravelly voice scares small children. <laughs> but I'm stunned. <laughs> I thought Joe Cocker would have been in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No, and neither is Stevie Ray Vaughan. I, I don't know why. Wait, Stevie Ray Vaughan isn't either? Nope. No, Check but... It out. All right. These are, these are two shocking things. I mean, we're at the point where it's almost... It's almost good to let everybody in now. If you put out a record, you should go into the rock and roll. If you've and, taken uh, guitar lessons, <laughs> you're in. This has to mean something. If you went to the school of rock in your neighborhood, <laughs> like if you're in a, you're part of the Ninth Street Band, why not? If you learned recorder in first grade, you're in. Um, Joe in Maine. Joe. Uh, I just got back from Cabo. I was at this man's birthday party, Mr. Sammy Hagar. No, Sammy Agar is in as part of Van Halen, right? I thought both Van sure. Halens went in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that like a thing? Because that's why Dave didn't show up that night, because Sammy was going to be there. Yeah, Sammy's in it. Um, so he is in. He's not in for the Red Rockers solo work. Um, well, because, what about Chicken Foot? Chicken Foot should be in. Well, I don't think it's time for Chicken Foot, but even when it is, I doubt if they're going to get in. You know, they were kind of in. Uh, you know, after our bands are over things. They should be in the conversation, at least, though. <laughs> Chicken foot? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Throw them on there. You know, like a Shaka Khan. You know they're not going to get in, but, oh you know, they're, they're going to be nominated. Just being a goddamn <laughs> sexist, racist piece of garbage. I, I love all people. Oh, Stevie Ray Vaughan is in. He was inducted by John Mayer last year. Thank okay, you. perfect. Because so that would have been crazy. <laughs> yeah. Right, and then John Mayer actually said this. I know what you're thinking. I should be in, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be. <laughs> Count on it. Start, <laughs> start counting your calendars down. All right, take your time with this. Eight four four Rock God, eight four four Rock God. The, the who's in and who should not be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Joe Tex. Uh huh. Huh? Don't you get away with it, did you? Mm. I say. Uh-huh. Not only does Joe Tex go in, but the person who puts him in, uh, is going to be Quentin Tarantino. I would love oh, that. Would that. Be that would be perfect. And they're just kicking a cop. <laughs> and pushing a cop around. Um, not only should be in for that, but anyone who wrote the song "I, uh, I Don't Want to Bump No More with No Big Fat Woman" <laughs> belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now I know you guys didn't grow up with the bump. What a wonderful dance that was when you just bump asses up against each other. It was really the beginning of the twerk. It was like a <laughs> gentle, yeah. friendlier twerk. That you did with a partner. But I will say this to you. You don't want to bump no more with no big fat woman. <laughs> and then I also we did a song about troglodytes, which was... That's crazy. Uh, yeah, it was... I'm telling you, it was on top of the world. Also, just a, a great dresser. He dressed... He always looked to me like he put on last night's drunk clothes. <laughs> like there was a, a wrinkled look Like to stylish, him. but like <laughs> yes. rumpled. Yes. Stylish, but rumpled. Um... <laughs> Uh-huh. Rick, Syracuse. Hey, RB, how you doing? How about Climax Blues Band, Ronnie? Uh, shopping bag people sure have a hard, hard time. I put the uh, the Climax Blues Band in there. Not exactly a big popular band, though. You know, I don't think I know much of most the Climax people don't. Blues. Uh, Daryl, Colorado. Hey, Ron. Uh, just for the record, I was going to let you guys know Stevie Ray Vaughan got in last year. And I'm glad to hear it. Thank you, my friend. He belongs in there because there's going to be a Texas flood, and he's the only person we can call on. Phil in Rockland, what's up? All day and all night, it, the New York Dolls need to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. A hundred percent agreed. The Rock and Roll uh, Hall of Fame needs to open their doors to the New York Dolls. In fact, maybe we should just rename the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the New York Dolls, so then every year you get inducted. Into the New York Dolls. Hall of Fame? Sure. I think everybody would agree to that. I think even the past people would go, oh, this is even better. <laughs> it's like when you find out that your college became a university. You're like, oh my God, this is amazing. This makes now I have a university degree, right? <laughs> to switch over? Craft work. No. Craft work is pretty cool. Mm. I all, would have said yay, but I know it has to be unanimous. Too German. Too German, too craft worky, too dumb. MC5. 
They're it, not in before this? Um, I don't understand it either. I'm hearing this for the this first time. Does it make any sense? MC5 are nominated this year, yeah. They're Why nominated. have they not always been? Here's one of the problems with them. A lot of times they would do their show and then steal the equipment. <laughs> and sometimes they even stole the equipment before the show. <laughs> and people got mad about that. This is an obvious yay. And should have been years ago. Yes. For the White Panther Party? Of course. Of course. Everybody agrees 100%. <laughs> and finally. The finally? F- this last one. Nine, number 19, Steppenwolf. Well, I dig Smoke and Lightning and Heavy Metal Thunder. <laughs> Uh, I don't see how you don't put Steph Wolf in. Yeah. Maybe for having the single greatest song for any motorcycle club out there. Where, when I was younger, there was a dive bar that would sell, uh, show, uh, serve younger people. Mm-hmm. And I mean eighth and ninth graders. <laughs> and you could go in there and enjoy some drinks. Mm-hmm. And it was also a thing of a certain motorcycle club, club would hang out there. And if the song was played on the jukebox, they were the only people permitted to dance to that song. And if you found yourself like, oh, I love the song and started dancing along, you could find yourself stumped. Oh, no. So I would take other kids in and I say, look, we're going to be able to drink, but we have to retain a quiet cool in this room. <laughs> Don't go eyeballing people. Don't go to that pool table at all. That pool table. That's not for you. That's, that's off limits. We're, you know, it could just turn ugly over at the pool table. It's either going to cost us a lot of money yeah. or fingers. And never dance along to Steppenwolf's uh, Born to be Wild. You don't have that right. You don't have the colors for that. Sure. Now, what kind of dancing were they doing? Like, in what way were they? It's a very good question. Figure a one-person mosh pit. <laughs> it was a, it was just a raised arm swinging it around. Right. And matter of fact, don't watch them dance to this song. Just keep your head down. <laughs> Look at your beer. Look at this beer that you're able to drink, sitting down like a gentleman. Now, how often would it come on the jukebox? <laughs> Sometimes I'm not making this up. A good fourteen or fifteen times a night. I remember uh, <laughs> once we were walking into this place, and there was a bunch of them there, and everything felt so surly and e- and evil that I walked in and just turned it around and started <laughs> heading right back out again. And I found out that one of their members had been busted on a very serious crime. And those are the times that you didn't want to be around those guys because they'd be looking for you know a reason. Yeah. And when you're outweighed by 175 to 180 pounds, <laughs> and you know they've got 20 years to 25 years on you, you don't want to be there on a bad night. No. You know? I mean, if there's ever a time that you could feel like a guppy, you know what I mean? Like literally know what it feels like to be a swimming, <laughs> swimming guppy around. I would say yes to induct them. But we would need to keep the same rules. No, no dancing during this song. A when biker club should induct them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, of course, just a second wolf. This might be the uh, uh, greatest song of all time. Uh, Matthew. Have you heard of a band called U2? Have <laughs> you ever heard of a band called U2? Uh, Snowy, what's up? <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? I got kind of a pick that it's not very sexy and probably not very big in uh, kind of a niche uh, crowd, but Alan Parsons project. Well, Alan Parsons also belongs in there as a producer and yes, engineer exactly. and everything. I mean, and also because they uh, remember the Bulls used to come out to that song. Oh yeah, and it would be yep, just yep. like so thrilling to, when you know you're waiting to see Michael Jordan and company. And uh, they, every game would be this. Go ahead, turn it up, Chris. You look at that place going crazy. And this isn't a rock show. This is a basketball game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was thrilling. <laughs> I'm going to see Michael Jordan. Do it, Jordan. <laughs> oh, my God. Poor Jordan. He's got a slam dunk! 
I knew it! We're here! We'll see him slap them! Repeat, baby! I would left this as part of the song if I was out in the parts of the Man, this animation is hilarious I know. now. Like, yes, yeah, 90s animation. It's hilarious. We've come it's a long so way. To me. <laughs> We've come a long way with animation. Fucking boy, boy. Look at this. Pippin! Those guys were rock stars. That's a rock star <laughs> entrance. The Chicago Bulls. That was exciting. Fuck, that was great. That's enough for Alan Parsons to get in. But here's what I would like: I would like the Bulls to show up with him. <laughs> Definitely. Harper gets. Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barry, Barry in Jersey. Robbie, how you doing? Good. Um, Robin Charles, is he in the, the Hall of Fame? I doubt it very much. The bridge of size was not crossed in this uh, situation. The new Jimi Hendrix, not welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Not in the Hall of Fame. Um, here is uh, Tim. Tim of Virginia. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, Mick Ronson from uh, the Spiders. Well, Mick Ronson, I don't believe because they put Bowie in as a single act. I'd have no problem. With uh, the great Mick uh, Ronson being there. Not in, but there is a petition to get him in. I have no problem with that petition. Who files those? Me and a couple other guys. <laughs> um, Michael Jordan and Alan Parsons. <laughs> and the three of us are very well respected in the world of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Harper should be in for the Harper Valley PTA. Sure. Okay. <laughs> There's no reason that he shouldn't. All right, this is going to get ugly. Chuck from North Carolina. Chuck. Hey, Ronnie. How you doing, man? Good, buddy. Before I tell you, I think I'm going to be in there. She's not in there. The best show I ever saw was in a small club, about 250 people. Jay Gall and Atlanta Rhythm Station. That sounds like a hell of a night. I didn't, I, I didn't know much about Jay Gall then. I was a lot younger. But, damn, they put on a hell of a show. Yeah, they're amazing. I mean, I couldn't believe it. They're an amazing uh, live band, and everyone gets caught up in their later 80s work. But Nobody sits on their ass no. and just listens. Everybody's up moving around, getting with it. No, you're exactly right. Is Buffett, is, I don't like Jimmy Buffett shit that much. Is he in the Hall of Fame? Oh, give me a break. I don't even have to look it up. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Are you Chuck, sure, you know Chris? That. There's no He has way. his own radio station here at Sirius XM. I don't, I don't, I don't like him, but he, if I if them rappers... And some of them motherfuckers, Shaka Khan, whatever. Fucking I name already is. voted off Shaka Khan. It's not no way. Chris took care of Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett has sold a shitload of fucking albums. So he has. He has. Who cares? Really has. Who cares? No, he's not. Well, I, I looked I it up. Like, well, I don't like the motherfucker either. But <laughs> hell, I didn't. I didn't think you could kick a field goal either. So it equals that. <laughs> You're, hey, Chuck is He's right. You really couldn't kick a field goal. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> That's right. Sure, I couldn't get to the NFL. Now, whatever. Chris, maybe you've never heard a song called Cheeseburger in Paradise. You haven't heard that? Oh, that's but, huge. Yeah. That's huge that's, song. That's gigantic. And I think about it every time I'm in Paradise. I'm like, it's nice here, but I would like to get a cheeseburger. <laughs> you know? Yes. Hey, hey, Ron, he has his own restaurant did, chain. Yeah. Did the, did the reason uh, Chris didn't make the Giants just because of a wooden-legged pirate beat him out? <laughs> no. A guy who beat up his wife beat me out. So. You non-kicking fuck. <laughs> Ron, y'all have a good day. You too, buddy. <laughs> mean. Thanks for your call. I had a feeling he was just trying to get your goat there, Chris. I <laughs> sense a troll. Yeah. Maybe you've never heard the song Changes in Attitudes, Changes in Latitudes. <laughs> I mean, I could give it a listen. 
Or is it changes in latitudes, changes in attitudes? I don't know. I which think came it's from. latitudes first. Yeah, it's I don't latitudes. think I don't think that you just change your attitude and you're at a different <laughs> latitude. But that's great rhyming. I, and I <laughs> right. seriously, I think I think Easy E would have agreed that that was an interesting rhyme. You don't like this case? Not a fan. What What do you like by him? Nothing. Boat drinks. <laughs> Do you like the song Boat Drinks? Because you drank them. I never, never heard of uh, Boat Drinks. Oh, uh, well, you'll put it on next. <laughs> Tom, what do you got for us? <laughs> Tom. Ron. Yes. This is a band over the years. Sometimes I've heard you give them props. Sometimes I've heard you shit on them. Are we not men? We are Devo. We uh, are let Devo. me just tell you, Devo belongs there for a couple of reasons. But number one, when they were on Saturday Night Live and they covered the Stones, the amount of even pre-internet hate that took Precise place, Thompson. yeah, because uh, people could not believe, like the balls for them the to do balls that. for them, and to they felt like they were making fun of the Stones. <laughs> that fucking covers the shit. It's I so know. good. It's so I I love Devo. It's an obvious yes if Devo was up, but uh, yeah, a lot of people have I that. Capital. Oh, shut up, back door. Now imagine, you know, this is. The 70s, when everybody has kept the stones on top of whatever uh, mountain they belong on. I went to a, a Devo show and had one of the best times I've ever They're had great. at a show. I had so much fun. Uh, Rick, what's up? Rick, turn your radio down, buddy. Rick, turn your radio down. There you go. How far away are you from your radio? It takes you that long to turn it down. No, I'm driving in a car, man. All right, so that should have been really easy. <laughs> Unless you're in the back seat. Uh, Rick, man, what do you I'm, got? Having a, I'm having a hard time. I think you know. There's a there's a song called uh, "Sweet Jane" by the Cowboy Junkies. It was out of the Trinity Session, I think, up in Canada. Uh, yeah, I know "Sweet Jane" was originally, I think, from uh, Tom Petty. But you're killing me, dude. <laughs> no, that's a God. fucking that's <laughs> no. Lou Reed in the Velvets. Can I just say this? Uh, and I've seen the Cowboy Junkies before, and they're very laid back. Yeah. Some in Colorado. I like them a lot. And uh, you know, when you're high in the mountains like that. I almost fell asleep eight times, you know, <laughs> because there is so that sound is unbelievable. Yeah. And then I'm also, you know, above sea level by, I believe, 18 miles <laughs> where the sky is. You know, I was in the sky. He was actually in the I was in the sky. The real sky. Uh, but I don't know if you can get in for one cover song and, you know, yeah. a couple. I of like nice... them a lot, though. And yes, I, would ag- I would agree that 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 song is incredible. Like, that cover is right. maybe one of my favorites of all time. Not the Hoople does a cover that I like even better. OK, I know. No. And Matt the Hoople's still not in the Hall of Fame. No, that makes me want to fucking shoot up a goddamn gymnasium. <laughs> Wait, I probably shouldn't say this in the, in the post shoot up. No, an empty gymnasium oh, good. is what I wanted to shoot just up. Just dump out of that, just in case. Dump out of any of this stuff in case I'm running for president. So. And dump out of the part where you said no to Shaka Khan, Chris. Yeah. Dump out of the part where you were in the show at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it just sounds like we're hearing voices in our heads. Listen how sexy that is. It's such a, a sexy cover. Sweet yeah, it's amazing. Natural Born Killers soundtrack. Great soundtrack. Who are you looking for, Chris? Who are you texting along with? Something for post show. He's refreshing. Oh, Chris. <laughs> do I have to put your. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put your uh, phone in a water bucket for every show. <laughs> Turn on the hose. Oh, God. <laughs> and then every show, you have to order a new phone at the end of it. I might be able to swing that. <laughs> um. Sweet. Yeah, they're not in. <laughs> they're not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a sweet cover, though. It's a really good cover. You know, I, I was saying about stuff that they keep. Howard Stern came out and said this. He will not release any of the Trump uh, tapes from his show. He goes, the guy was my guest. And I'm not going to take advantage of that. 
by putting that out. Are we talking about stuff that went out on the air? Or he's talking about stuff any- that went out on the air or was said at any time. He's not necessarily a Trump backer, but he said well, that was a guest on my show. And we said things in the context of the show. And I don't feel like I want to be part of using it against him. I thought that was very classy. Uh, unfortunately, Donald Jr. doesn't have anybody looking out for him because his tapes are all over. They're out there. Yeah. yeah. And being shared. Uh, and I don't know who puts them out either. I don't think they come from in-house. A lot of people yeah. save tapes. But you can never go back years ago when somebody was ball busting on the air and say, this is who that guy is. Because you're going for the joke. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if someone said, Oh, I have something horrible to say that would get a big laugh, but it's really not true. I would say, well, then say it. (laughs) Say your horrible thing. I don't think it defines people when they're attempting. Like if you're on a roast, because they brought up some of the stuff from the roast. You're on a roast. You're not supposed to believe the stuff that you're saying on a roast. I do think that if you are on as someone's guest or you are being interviewed... There's a certain thing that's like, that is supposed to be a sacred space. You know, you know that someone is, sh- it's being broadcast, it's being shared. Right. But then if that person then turned around and used that against you, it would feel a bit like. Well, let's face it, it would only happen for political purposes. There would be no other purposes that you would go out and get this uh, tape and say, oh, I don't think you should be able to do something because look what you said on a shock jock show. like. We're all unelectable and have been for quite some time. Oh, yeah. God, I mean, yes. we could not get elected to anything. Yeah. No. Think- iTunes reviews alone for me. <laughs> yeah, they're bad. I think but I still might lot, be though. able to. Huh? I still think I might be able to. You wouldn't be able to be elected to anything. <laughs> Why? Just because you guys are my friends? Yes. <laughs> because of that, you'll never be able to get your kids into a private school. <laughs> That'll be it. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was great that Trump didn't jump on the bandwagon, even though Larry Flint said he will give up one million dollars for any Trump recordings that could hurt him. He throws out a lot of bounties, Larry Flint. <laughs> and he's been doing it for a lot of years. Yeah. Yeah. He does like a bounty. <laughs> what what was there? There was like, what was the one just a couple years ago? He had like a similar for nudes, I think. Yeah, it must have been. for nudes. He said if anyone saw Mitt Romney who had a tape of Mitt Romney pushing over a wheelchair, <laughs> he would give you a million dollars for it. <laughs> Just, you know, and it's a good idea to see him burning a child. You know, like being so mad at a child that you put his hand on a pan and make him stand, you know. And it is one way to learn. You know. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember it happened to me and I thought to myself, I've learned a lesson. I'm never putting my hand on a hot pan again. Yeah. That's it for me. Old fashioned, maybe, but mm. it was a way to learn. Old fashioned, can I tell you something? Old fashioned may be the best way for everybody to learn. You know what I mean? Let's get the kids back in chalkboards. Let's have ink wells. All right. That's when America <laughs> was great. Ink well time. Yeah. You just have a nice ink well, and you're like, I hope I get this ink under the paper without leaving little ink dots all over it. I also would like to go back to a simpler time when kids didn't have backpacks, but just that cool leather strap that went around your books. You write, yeah, you lap <laughs> your own belt. You have to hold up your belt like, with your hand, yeah. and then you walk down the street <laughs> with your... Last person I see to have that was the kid from Sling Blade. He, he rocked the belt with all his books. <laughs> You are that kid. <laughs> See that player. person. I love that kid. All. <laughs> I like the way he talks. He like the way I talk. Brain fried potato. <laughs> you want to come being a football game with us against some small children? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best scene in any movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> Just that big bastard running around <laughs> stiff arming children. Frushing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the fetus. My baby sister's in the backyard. What? I love you, boy. <laughs> I wish that there was just a scene where the two of them made out. <laughs> consensually, of course. It's yes, consensually. <laughs> not forced. Yeah, he wanted the kid. You know? Oh, Aww. Chris. <laughs> See, un- 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 unelectable. Like, everything we say and you say it so much worse. How, how is it worse? Let me he tell you wanted this, it, the kid, and he did it in his I know. backwards <laughs> <laughs> Staten Island talk. He wanted it, the kid. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, the, the context of the looking, film. The, no, the line you're looking for is the kid wanted it. The way you got to that point took forever. It's like it's like there was a mountain slide and you couldn't make the pass into those words, and you had to go around. He wanted it, the kid. <laughs> He's like in a story of Yoda. <laughs> Thank you. That's a compliment. Yoda was a Jedi master. Mm, desired the penis, the boy did. <laughs> Oh, that Star Wars is something. I can't wait for the new one. Oh, Rogue One. It's coming, man. Easy, Chris. We're all together here. Nobody's against you. It's in between the first two trilogies. Good, good. Or the second two. I can't. First two trilogies. There's I no just want to make sure. Trilogy. It's coming, the third trilogy. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Thanks, Yoda. You're welcome. It's coming, the third trilogy. <laughs> Who are you tapping away to, son? I should probably switch out with Vito. Why, said, what's going on? Something bad when you're no, doing no, that? No, no, good thing. No, good things. Just something for post show. Pro show. What? Post show. Oh. For I the post show it is. Probe show. Survivor? Um, so Michael Moore just announced this today, that he's making a quickie documentary about Trump. And um, He better hurry up. It looks like he's current. Here's what it says: He's currently in the editing room, mixing room, putting the final touches on it for tonight's premiere at the IFC Center at nine thirty. It's crazy. For most of his subject matters, I think it's like, oh, I'm so glad he delved into this, and yeah. we, you know, stuff that maybe you didn't know the full story of something i just feel like i know i know a lot about trump <laughs> yeah feels, i know i know everything there is i just that. feel like there's nothing i, I can learn about trump really well on a trump test yeah someone could say to me trump shot up a gymnasium i'm like i know i saw it <laughs> saw it on tv it's everywhere. he's done everything <laughs> i know more about him than i do most family members <laughs> oh yeah absolutely and he's right it's rigged that's why he's not going to win. It's all rigged. It's rigged and she's on drugs. She's on drugs and she was rigging stuff. Yeah. That's the problem. She's doing big what rails kind of, and Adderall. What kind there. of drugs does he think she's on? Ecstasy. <laughs> I think she th he thinks he's taking a lot of ecstasy. Okay. I think she's smoking angel dust at an alarming rate. <laughs> angel dust? Really? Yeah. You think Hillary Clinton would smoke angel dust? She loves Nazi dope. She yeah. does meth and angel dust. She's I dusty. know it. I heard it from a lot of people. She's knick-knacked. <laughs> no one ever uses that term knick-knack anymore but was that was on younger, drugs yeah when you were smoking angel dust a lot of times it'd be like your whole body would freeze up but you'd just be like screaming on the inside but you your body wouldn't move and we called it knick-knack and we were like um well that's scary yeah and we just be, act like just put him up on the fucking shelf he's knick-knacked but then we'd also say if someone wasn't uh, paying attention to you, like if I said something but you kept talking to Chris, I'd go like this. What am I, a knick-knack over here? <laughs> and then it finally got down to knick-knack, eh? <laughs> if somebody didn't respond to you immediately. So how that went from being whacked out on fucking dust to just saying knick-knack, eh? Uh, means nobody's paying attention to you. And I felt like that was done in a Three Stooges curly way. <laughs> knick-knack, eh? <laughs> Uh, there is a uh, not safe for work video up on the iBank today mm -hmm. of a butt luge being used. Uh, a Buffalo Bills fan is drinking out of a butt luge <laughs> where you're pouring it down the young lady's back. And I was hoping this would have been either Trump or Billy Bush, but it wasn't. But you pour the alcohol down her back. Okay. And uh, and then you're there. Then the for butt the luge. becomes the luge. Yeah. Cool McCoy jersey. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Here's a woman who doesn't understand this, what a butt luge is. She doesn't understand. Yeah. Why the butt luge? I'll say this: the young woman being used as a luge, fantastic butt on her for a thin girl. Yeah, it was, it's a it's a little it's a little narrow, I would say, no, it's, for an ideal luge, but yeah, 
But I mean, for a thin girl, she does have a. Uh, she has an ass. She has the ass of, I would say, a topless dancer that you want to <laughs> go into. Like, oh, you have a nice, but look, you can see how thin she is. She's a very thin girl. Yeah. Now, I mean, he's dug right in. Yeah, yeah he's, he's in. chin in the bunghole. Now, coming from a woman's perspective, I didn't even think I of it that way. I see this video, and the first thing I think is incredible burning. No. Alcohol down. I don't think it's going to get to the rump if this guy's doing his job. So it it never. I see I the way I imagine this is okay. it passes over the asshole into the mouth is how I was imagining it. <laughs> but his mouth's kind of high up. I feel like his chin is in her bung <laughs> and protecting. <laughs> oh, he's protecting. Okay, it. I see. All right, I understand now. It seems like it's only like Bud Light. It doesn't seem like it's actually hard liquor, <laughs> okay. which would burn more. I okay, but still, Chris. Yes. A bud- I, just pour Bud Light down your butthole and tell me that it's I'll not going to hurt. I'm sure it would. Would it hurt less so than a, a grain alcohol? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't seem like he even would have the place in life to get to that butt, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, this is a once in a lifetime chance for him. He's taking a shot. Yeah. This is all right. Almost like watching the movie Rocky for me. Like, I can't believe this is his time. I hate to say it. He's somewhat of a Vito-looking guy. I'm now, not, Vito, you're a, a wannabe dude, bro, right? Sometimes, I guess. Do you, would you do the butt luge if it came up? I In my head at first, I was like, yeah, I'd totally do it. But then the, the idea of like the, the beer going past the butthole grosses me out a little. But then I figured... But you're not I've, a rimming guy. I've you're had my face guy. in there before, so it should be okay. Yeah, I mean, you have said on this show you're very pro-butt stuff. It's, but once you mix a liquid in there, it get, that gets messy. What's Better than a solid. Cause, but, <laughs> but like a liquid like that, like if, you, if, wa- if enough water goes up a butt... Down the- if enough water goes up a butt, that could cause an enema. And then a lot comes out. Right. This is not going to go up. It's not going up. You know, you're new to radio, so take your time. Never step on a laugh. Never. <laughs> Two, Chris, if you were somewhere, right? Yeah. And this veto didn't take the butt loose. Yeah. Right? No, oh, yeah. What would you be saying about it? I would be saying derogatory things to him. In what way? Like anti-gay. Okay. <laughs> anti-gay. The way he had to say that with such shame. Like, not even like, I'm going to call him gay, but it's specifically anti-gay. Like, you're it against was, gay. I'm not against gay people. <laughs> easy. Easy. But uh, the things I would say, would people might, you know, might think that I am, but I'm not. The amount of things he has to say in the course of a day and defend himself. No. I'm not a sexist. <laughs> I'm not a rapist. I'm not a racist. He's Kurt Schilling. I'm not he lives his life like Kurt Schilling. <laughs> and sometimes I'm not a centaur. No, I've come to terms. I am a centaur, everyone. Oh, you are? I, I, I'm a centaur. I have four legs. I'm a mythical beast. I've come to grips with it. <laughs> Finally. I had no idea you felt that strongly. Yeah. I have a fucking bow and arrow in the right. It's too hard. Right. <laughs> you don't have to be that harsh. Okay? <laughs> Give the people what they want. <laughs> Would you take the butt loose? Yeah. Or are you, is your heart still broken? You're okay. coming up a what, on a year? Yeah, a year. About it's a year. time to start dating you again. You think? Man. Yeah. Can I ask, would you prefer to give or receive the butt loose? First of all, there's not enough beer to fill up his butt. <laughs> we, could put, we could empty a keg and it would disappear between those ass. <laughs> I can't find it. It's got to be in here somewhere. Just keep pouring. <laughs> Is there anything he would, left? He's such an alcoholic, he'd be trying to suck it up with his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Take it in somehow. It's fucking getting drunk by osmosis. Okay. Okay, Chris. You know? It's <laughs> called butt chugging, Chris, and oh, it's real. Fine, Gail. It's butt chugging. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Stop Why are you yelling. mad at butt chugging? Let's chug- try to be the show of friends. All right, friendship. I yeah. didn't invent the butt chug, okay? Tom Segura uh, <laughs> is our next unmasked. And um, I have a feeling it's going to be my favorite of all time. Because he might be my favorite person of all time. That's happening next Thursday, October 27th at 3 p.m. here at the SiriusXM studios. Go to theinterrobang.com for a chance at free tickets. You got to get on them because they're going fast, of course. And we're going to play the time that he called us with the Mike Tyson story. Yeah. uh, A little later on in the uh, show today. Um. I'm going to be out at the stand tonight for Roastmasters, but it doesn't start till 10.30. Yeah, 10.30 is the start time. Uh, 
Uh, do you know who my other judges are? Yeah, I'll find. I have, uh, I have the list right here. Uh, Harry Shearer is uh, suing for $125 million uh, to get the Spinal Tap copyright back. Um, that's a lot of money. Here's another company news story that's good. Tracy Morgan and Artie Fuqua and Harris Stanton all went back to Dover Downs to do a show. And that was the show that they did the night that they were in the accident on the way home. Oh, wow. That's really cool that they did that. Yeah. Uh, and left, and I don't even want to say this, it's too hard to say, but a, a, an empty seat with a yellow bow on it up front. That would kill me. That's heartbreaking. All right, golden bow, not a yellow bow. bow. That's stupid. Um, still nice, but... Yeah. Uh, and then also up on the iBang today is the video of Amy Schumer on stage with a Trump supporter where she was booed a little bit in Tampa. And they made a big deal about this. As a matter of fact, we were downstairs after the show, and it was on the news scroll outside of Fox that she had 200 walkouts. But I saw then that there were 8,400 seats sold. So Shit. 200 walkouts is not that big. <laughs> That's like one couple gets out and walks out on you in the <laughs> cellar. You want to know something? Yeah. I actually misread that as 20. And I thought I was like, that doesn't sound bad at all. <laughs> well, 200 is not, you're not going to notice more people walk out in Tampa when there's one pick and they decide, <laughs> the hell with this game, the Bucks lost. So let's get out of here. Um, but people do not like to hear... Like, they can really like a person, and then if their political view isn't shared, they're destroyed by it. Yeah, and we've talked about this before, that it, it for the most part, it seems like most entertainment, your most of your entertainers are going to lean left, and there's a handful of those who lean right. But if you just, like, enjoy comedy or music, you're not going to think about their politics every time you listen to that person. Or even if you do, if you're hearing their political stuff, it still could be funny or entertaining. I mean, we say right. that Nick DiPaolo destroys us. Yeah. And he's doing his, uh, the politics show here at Sirius XM. Uh, where are they at? There are, it's 11 to 12 on channel 94. Now, what does 94 do overall? 94 is comedy greats, but it's rebranded for politics for this, uh, for oh, this that's interesting. leading up to the election. Oh, that's and cool. Comedy Greats doesn't even normally allow cursing, right? Or is that the no, other? No, that's uh, Laugh, Laugh USA. USA. Laugh USA. Oh, that's, that's for kids, too. That's Dan's uh, place. We haven't seen Dan in a long time. No. I miss the guy. I miss the big lug, you know? Oh, yeah. Disco, he's the best. I miss his laugh. I saw Denny today, and Denny uh, said to me about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, then you feel bad that the DeFranco family was forgotten again? And then I was like, yeah. And I kept walking down the hall and I just heard it fading away. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to make sure that I knew that he was joking and that I didn't laugh. So he was going to give it a long, like, uh, like hearing a thunderclap in the distance. Just getting smaller and smaller, but it's still thunder. But it, it obviously made it very clear to you. Yeah. So, I mean, here's what I avoid. You know Amy, and you know her TV show, and you know she's kind of anti-gun, pro-choice, pro-women's rights. What would you expect to see if you bought tickets to this show? Yeah. Her to suddenly come out on Trump's side? Well, she'd also they... written in her book what a shitty town Tampa is which cracked me up <laughs> and then went back and just like sold out this giant place yeah I don't know what you would expect I mean maybe their hope was that she wouldn't talk about anything but you know that's, that's what she does that's what that's she does thing. yeah just buy tickets just like I, this person seems in, like this, we know this person's able to buy tickets to it, and I really look into it. Do you it. think there are people like that? Like, I've seen her, and I know she's famous. I saw her on Entertainment Tonight. Yeah. Let's just go, and then be shocked I feel that by that her ha- act. That has to be the 200 people, that, or at least a part of the 200 people that walked out. Like, oh, we need something. To, let's do something. Let's go out for the night. Or right, get Amy Schumer tickets. She's popular. And just not even look into it. Not even I, just, on YouTube I wouldn't even it. know someone like that. You know what I mean? Like, I... <laughs> 
<laughs> I wouldn't know. Like, I've heard that name before. I'll buy a ticket. You know why that's especially weird to me? It's, because it's hard enough for me to convince myself to go see shows that I do want to see. Right. Let alone something that I would be taking a chance on. Like, musicians, comedians, like, come into the city all the time, and I'm like, I want to go, but then I'll go out that night. Yeah, I'll be outside, and I'm... Standing in line at stuff. There's going to be a crowd there. You got to. Mm. You got to really want to go out to well. Now, the the one act that I understand that people would be shocked at is Bob Saget, because <laughs> he is not. His act is nothing yeah. like America's Happy Dad. Yeah, like it was on that TV show. I don't even know what the name of his show was. Full House. Okay, Full House. So you got that, and he's like, "Oh, don't worry, honey. You're going to be good tomorrow." And then you go to a stand-up show, and he's just yeah. hilariously edgy. I could see people being shocked by that. It's not America's Funniest Home Videos. No. No, 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 no. It's very different. But uh, you've had enough time to hear about it by now. <laughs> <laughs> Do some research. It's out there. All right. We need to break. Uh, we're going to come back and play the Tom Segura thing so you'll know how funny this man is. Uh, and make sure you get your tickets to Unmask. Go to the iBank.com for that. Also, later on in the show, we've got to catch up on the 30 songs in oh, 30 yeah. days. We forgot all about that. I don't know how we forgot about it, Chris. But we've fallen behind like five songs. We have four songs to go. We have four songs. <laughs> Wait, These not, are going to have to get like... To go? Uh, there's four new songs is the okay. actual thing. <laughs> but I but there should be something like 25 after this. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there's another 22. Oh, my God. Why did we ever say we'd get into this? <laughs> this is more than I'd ever want to do in my life. <laughs> uh, all that and more. This is Bennington. It's like a 140-character live journal. It's hashtag Bennington. Tweet it. Welcome back to Bennington. Ron Bennington, Gail Bennington. Nope. Chris Stanley's with us, and a young man who, if you look at him through the glass, he's the sad boy through the glass today, mm. because the word is out, the angel in the outfield, Tim Tebow, is stinking up the Arizona League. <laughs> he can't hit, can't run, can't catch. For a lifelong Mets fan like you, Vito, what's that do for you? You know, he was just dominating that instructional league, and we all had high hopes but that's like saying you're good in gym class. And if you look at <laughs> if you look at the Mets um win loss record after they signed him, after we signed him we went on a tear through the late summer and it looked like God gave us good luck because we signed his boy. And now now that we're out Is that kind of stuff where you turn religion into luck that really really confuses me. Do you think God would be pleased enough to let your team win? Because you drafted some unplayable guy. And yeah. Nick at night is the baseball guy, right? Not you. Nick at night cares about baseball. Isn't that right? Uh, you can't nod because we can't hear you. Ask him right now. Yeah, he's, yeah, he says he does. He's a bigger soccer guy than anything. Okay, so should I bring him in for soccer talk? Yes, he knows. Okay, but not baseball talk. He doesn't really know that much about baseball. Okay, thanks. That's all you have to do is tell me the truth. I won't battle. I'll never battle you. I'll have some soccer topics to talk about. Like soccer. Is it better to kick it or pick it up and run? Those are the type of things I'm going to be doing in the future. Pick it up. But do you now feel like this thing was all hype and you got played? I do, but I still think he can he can make the single A Brooklyn team just to be some mascot that people will come out to see. That's to me. Why that's do you pathetic. want that? That's pathetic. Because it's disgusting. It, it brings in fans and to make that minor league would, money. Would he Who cares? Be, why would, he would you be care about that? that? As a Mets fan, why would you care that by bringing this carnival act in, this <laughs> sideshow freak, it happens to make some small team in Brooklyn some money? And by the way, it's tough to even get tickets to that. Am I right? Yeah, it's, it's very, they're very, very popular. They don't need like help like getting people into the park. Well, they. I mean, they're still not. It's. They could still use the boost, and we own that team. It's not just an affiliate. Are they still the Cyclones? Yeah, they're still the Cyclones. I heard a rumor that the Cyclones are moving to Los Angeles. Uh, they said it worked for the Dodgers. Maybe it'll work for them. <laughs> do it. They should do yeah. it. Maybe they'll be the Silver Lake Cyclones. <laughs> Silver Lake. So cool. Right? It's so hip. Yeah. 
It's like I like that place because it's full of hipsters. Yeah, yes. the tight shirts and the fedoras. God, I love a fedora. I like a funny mustache. <laughs> oh, and I yeah. like a big, weird uh, cocktail that I've never seen before. Like, I'll drink it. What is it? Is that? It looks like there's ham in there. Mm. More ham in this booze. Me, I'm simple. I just like a Moscow mule. I like a bicycle that has a giant, just giant front wheel. So tiny you, back wheel? Yeah, tiny back wheel. So like when I'm driving by, people are like, hey, where did you get that bike from? I like everything I eat and drink to be artisanal. Everything. I like that, though. Yeah, I think that that's like one of those things that's just a made up thing about hipsters. I think that's just white people. White people like artisanal things. Yeah, and also that's a like it's something that people ca- said was a hipster thing, but I feel like it's more of a yuppie thing. And sometimes those things get well. I combined. will. S- I'll send back my meal if it doesn't have sea salt on it. I go. I have to have salt straight from the sea. And course, please. I want to see the salt. <laughs> True. I do want to see my salt. And I would just want you to crack the pepper in front of me. Mm. Fresh cracked. Yes, fresh cracked pepper. Hmm. Fantastic that way. What are you doing, Vito? Is he drinking? I, I don't like when the TVs change, so I always like to make sure they're good. Okay. Oh, that is That's... that is good. It's an, like, a nice Why little not, project for you. Just do me a favor. Don't look panicked while you're doing it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> look like you're holding a weapon uh, up at now, us. <laughs> you, feel, you feel nice now, and I'm in t- It's hot to me. All right. I'm going back in. Yeah. I'm changing it. We're all going to get pneumonia and die. <laughs> I'm trying not to keep up with the Mazul thing. I don't, I don't want to just watch war. Yeah. Vegas tomorrow night, folks. The last dabat. The last dabat that we'll be doing. And uh, the Washington Post said today, Trump can't win. I'm looking this map over and Trump can't win. <laughs> I was at 270 to win uh, for four hours last night. And I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm feeling like there is an inside straight that he could pull off. <laughs> what would be, what would be the... What would be the states that he could pull if he he's got to in? win Ohio, mm-hmm. uh, North Carolina, and Florida? He's got to pull either a Pennsylvania or a Wisconsin with that. And uh, I'd like to see him win Arizona and Nevada and Colorado. Yeah. Inside straight. I think he needs a lot. I think there's like nine states that he needs to win like seven out of nine to pull this off. He doesn't believe he can do it. He's actually saying this thing's rigged. Nobody could win this. I I honestly think that's his, his most preferred state. I think that's how he'll be happiest is that if he doesn't win, but then he gets to play on the thing of this was fixed. I was never He's not going to look the same to us, though. Once he loses, he'll never look the same to us. But don't you think there there will there will be people out there who believe? Yes, there'll be a slow decline of those people, like Sarah Palin had them. Right. Like for a year or two after they were still buying Sarah Palin's books, mm-hmm. and now this last election, she showed up and couldn't help Trump swing anything. He stopped even asking for. Her. He said it'd be better if you stayed up there in Alaska. The Republicans could lose Alaska for the first time ever. Wow. Alaska is tighter than ever. Where Where is the latest? I don't want you to go for that, Chris. I want you to go for what the polling is. So you click on it. Like a smart person, you mm, click on it. it. Yeah. And just give me the polling information, not the possibilities of losing information. You go higher than that. See, over there on the left. All right. Uh, it is 45.9 for Trump, 41.8 for Clinton. That's way closer than Alaska has ever been before. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was always a landslide type. Uh, it always was. Republic. But, you know, Trump isn't that close in some places that he's hoping to win. Sure. So, not looking good for the Donald T. Rump. He said, and I don't know whether he meant, he says if he loses this election, he's burning the Trump Tower down. What? <laughs> Not the tower. <laughs> yeah, he's burning it down. That's the best part. I kind of feel like the place to be, and I, 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 I think it might be a, a night for you or Vito to scope, is outside that tower for election night. I think oh it's going to be God. the funnest yeah. place in New York. It's going to be really I think intense. people are going to be coming in for it. That sounds amazing. I'm down. And there's some people that said he won't even make the concession call, which <laughs> would be fucking just so great. He won't do it. Yeah. They said Pence might have to make this concession. 
Oh I'm good. my god! He ha- now he has to make Pence do it. That'd be hysterical. Yeah. That'd Against his will, we can see. Did you just see the fucking towers, the Trump Tower burning, self lit, and then Pence going, "Well, are you satisfied, folks? <laughs> That's what you did to this man. He gave and he gave and he gave." <laughs> now you've l- made him light over his fucking monument to the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> I, whenever I go into Trump Tower, I'm reminded of this restaurant chain in Florida called Penrods. That was like pure 80s. Like the, the brass rails everywhere, oh, sure. glass and all. Classy. Yeah, and you haven't seen that until you go to Trump Tower. And it's all back. Was s- the smoky glass of the 80s or of the 70s? Because I think of it as an 80s, but it might have been no, carryover. I think, it, I think it's an 80s smoky glass look. Yeah, that was. It, it seemed like it was very popular. Smoky glass time. actually worked on the first radio station I ever worked at. <laughs> he was great. Smoky glass coming to you. I'll be here to midnight when the wolf howls. I'm like, what? What are you talking about, dude? Uh, I, you know how you, uh, how you say the girls want bee sting l- lips? They're yeah. always like, I want bee sting look. I want DSLs. That's, well, that's <laughs> not normally what we say to Oh, you talk. don't say that? I mean, no, not normally. That's not how we... But that's really how the duck lips came about is because it, it simulates the look. Of a blowjob? I didn't know that. No, of the bee sting oh, look. Oh, okay. I didn't know. <laughs> Sam's catching up because I'm only on Pinterest. It does and not look like a blow. I'm getting a vlog too, so I don't know how that works out. <laughs> but the, so this kid actually has bee sting lips by having bees sting his lips. So go ahead and and show that, Chris. Oh Holy God! Shit! I think it's just very Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a muppet. Luscious lips you've always wanted. Hmm. Well, here's an easy tip. Just have two wash sting you. Boom, boom. Right in the lips. And then kapow. Mmm. Oh. Kim Kardashian then be looking at you for lips for days. <laughs> Can't handle all this. Mmm. <laughs> totally free. You know how much I spent on this? Nothing. Went to chase some car keys. Pow, pow. Mmm. Two yellow jacket stings of the lip later and boom. Mm, who doesn't want some of that? Mm. Here's the thing about him. Sad face. Right? I like his confidence because I would be afraid it would never come down, no matter <laughs> oh, what I yeah. was told by a doctor. I would, I would not, uh, I would not be comfortable with it. So he's looking for his car keys. Two yellow jack. By the way, I haven't seen a yellow jacket since I was a little kid. Ugh. It looks very painful. Someone actually told me this too. There's no reason for a wasp at all. <laughs> Just cruel. Like, they're not pollinating? They're not pollinating. They're not making honey. They just kill? They just still, what? They just kill other insects? Who do they kill? Other insects. I don't know what they do to other insects. They hurt us. This is what we're talking about. They're just inflicting pain. I've yeah. been stung by a wasp before. And, uh, and I'll tell you how it happened. I was a little kid, and there was a wasp nest up on the side of the house. So my dad went up, and he had a hammer. Because he had the idea is, I'll just hit this wasp nest with a hammer. Oh, shit. And I guess what I didn't figure out as a person who was just there to watch, <laughs> that the wasps were going to be pissed about their home. <laughs> Eddie Trunk just walked by looking incredibly thin. Yeah, he looks great. Very, I noticed that good. yesterday. Yeah. Very, very good. So uh, he this... got jealous when Johnny lost weight, and he went for it, too. So it was the sins of the father that really got you there with the wasps. I guess you're right. I mean, I, I, there was no reason to think that the wasp would be angry that their... One specific person? That their house was hammered. My dad came up with a beautiful plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just hit this son bitch with a hammer. And then we'll have no more wasp problems. <laughs> but I remember even feeling like when I was a kid, when somebody... I felt sad for her. Like the bees in a hive when somebody would get rid of the hive. I'm oh, like, yeah. That's their home. Yeah, it makes me feel really bad. They built that. They built that city on rock and roll. Honey? I don't even like to see, like, in the subway when it has, like, rat poison signs around. I'm like, I feel bad for them. Though. I have no problem with that. But poisoning them instead of just shooting them? <laughs> like, imagine if you said, oh, go, we've got our enemies, we've poisoned them. That would be terrible. <laughs> the MTA doesn't have the manpower to go out and hunt them down every rat individually. How about give homeless people guns and that's, let them walk through the That's town? being a job creator. Yeah. 
Do you, but say you know you how long those Trump. rats run around with the poison in their stomach before they die? Yeah. Oh, really? It's, yeah. It's, what do you think? They just bite it and they fall over? <laughs> I thought, I don't know what how rat poison technology is advanced. Just, take a moment to think. All right. Have you ever heard of anyone poison who went on poison and fall down and die? Or do you see them running around throwing up with diarrhea? Oh, God. Yes. Now it's getting into your head. Now you now feel bad, like don't us. you? And disgusting. But. Hey, I've invented a new thing too for parents. They call it brat poisoning. And if your children are acting bad, you put in a little brat poison <laughs> into their food and, and then make it, them sick. And then it kills them? I'd like to take it right up to the point of killing, but not killing them. Maybe a, <laughs> a slight coma. A light coma. Yeah, where you'd say to their friends, Billy can't come out today. He's in a light coma. <laughs> Guess he wasn't listening much. Here, would you like a piece of candy? Don't smell it first. It smells like poison. <laughs> uh, Tom Segura is going to be an unmasked that we're all looking forward to. I will tell you now, it's very high again. Ed. He loves the wave every time he comes by. Just, I spend my day like like Vito, just waving <laughs> back and forth. I feel like Miss American here some days. You, you look like it. Thanks. That means a lot. Um, Trump runs all the stuff, so I can't be a part of it. <laughs> but Tom Segura is going to be on Unmasked. He's already tweeted this out to his fans. And so we expect to have what I consider a really fun Unmasked, because he's a great storyteller. He's a really fun storyteller, and he's just, he's so likable. It's just like, I just want to be buddies with him. He's very, very cool. He's very, very fun. Now, um, Chris was just telling us in Montreal, Tom told you a story, right? Yeah. Well, Tom told us that, told me that. Why don't you take a break and I'm going to pitch you the ball again okay. and you act like you're a person and just run with the story. I'm a person. Because uh, could you imagine, like you watch CNN, mm -hmm. they pitch it to people all the time. <laughs> yeah. No one is shocked or weirded out or stuttering. It's just people interacting. So I'm going to say to you, Tom Segura told you a story in Montreal. He was telling me that he got the... the um, he was, Why don't we take a second okay. again? We'll just... Uh, maybe, does Vito know the story? I can maybe have Vito, Vito doesn't do know the story. You don't know the story, Vito? No, I'm excited to hear it. Uh, but how about this? I asked you about soccer over there. Somebody willing to come in and help? Uh, not baseball, but soccer. You know you were going to be the baseball guy this year, right? Yes. And you decided not to be? No, I still am the baseball guy. Game is when's the next game? Tonight. And it's tonight is the uh the uh ALCS game. Which is which is um the uh, Blue Jays versus uh the Cleveland Indians. And where are they in the series? Uh it is O and two. And, and with the Who's the O and who's the two? The Blue Jays three nothing. The Blue Jays are losing. Cleveland is up three nothing? Yeah. So someone is not the baseball guy, right? I just messed that up. But it's okay, buddy. L l I gave Chris a chance to jump back in. No. So Tom Segura said something to you in Montreal, Chris. He said, "Who was he?" Tom Segura. Okay. Tom Segura told me that after he told the Tyson story on our show, that he decided to use that for his, uh, his end of his special, mostly stories. Okay. Which, if you've seen it. On most of these stories, it's hilarious. A little bit different on our show because he's a storyteller. But this, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago when we were doing Ron and Fez. Yeah. And uh, this is, uh, and somebody was out in Pittsburgh at the time and missed this, right? Yeah, uh, Sh Shelby was out Shelby, there. our buddy Shelby was out there. So Shelby went to the show, didn't want to bother him, and left. And Tom was like, dude, why didn't you tell me? You know, I'm stuck in Pittsburgh. But then Tom told us the story about being on a plane and Mike Tyson was on the same plane. Well, 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 look at this. Giving us a call today. Big comedy star, Tom Segura. Tom, good to talk to you, buddy. Hey, how's it going, Ronnie? It's good to hear from you. What's been up? Not a whole lot, man. I had to call you because I had just the most uh, amazing... Uh, show last week, last Thursday, in the great city of Pittsburgh. All right, who who uh, was there? Well, uh, former heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. What? Oh, damn. Just coming in to watch then, stand up? No, no, that's the that's the crazy part. Okay, this is banana. So, I'm leaving Wednesday for more for morning press Thursday, and you know, like sometimes you just 
you, you get your ticket and you and then as you get closer to the date, you're like, so what's my morning press tomorrow? And on Wednesday, I, I ask and they go, oh, we don't have anything set up. And I'm like, why the fuck am I going out a day early to do this shit if I have no press in the morning? Like, well, we have press Friday. I'm like, so I don't need to go out. So I'm super pissed getting on this flight to Pittsburgh from L.A. I sit down across the aisle, one row back, is Mike Tyson. Everybody boarding this flight is losing their fucking minds. Like, <laughs> like people stop as we're boarding and they're having full conversations. Like, I remember in 88 when you fucking <laughs> dropped your left hand in the second round. <laughs> And I'm like, and I'm sitting there, I'm actually like, I think it's cool to see them, but then I'm like, I can't believe how these people are acting, you know, like they right. cannot keep it together. So it keeps going, it keeps going, and it takes literally an extra 30 minutes to board this flight. He's super gracious to everybody. I don't say shit to him. A um, few hours into the flight, I'm like, you know what, I never bug people, but I feel like there's not a lot of chances to meet, like, he's iconic, you know, I... Yeah. I I can't let it slide. So I just go up to him. I don't want to bother you. I just want to say I'm a big fan. And he, he grabs me with his, like, bear paw. And, and he's like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And I go, yeah. I go, so what are, you, what are you going to Pittsburgh for? And he says he's promoting a fight. And he goes, what about you? I go, I'm a, I'm a comedian, and I'm just going to do shows. And he goes, where? And I said, the, uh, the Pittsburgh Improv. And he goes, where's that? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, I don't have the address memorized. And he goes, is your show tonight? And this is where it's 1145 at night on, at this point on the flight. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, no, we're, we're in the sky right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> so he goes, uh, when do you do your show? And I go, well, it's, it's a full like Thursday through Sunday at a comedy club. And he goes, where is it? And I go, it's the Pittsburgh Improv, like I said. And he goes, how do I find it? And I go, I don't know, man. I guess Google it or something. And he goes, I go, how about just Google my name? And I give him my DVD. And I go, here's my name. Just Google it, and it'll come up where I'm at. And he goes, okay. So I sit back down in my seat. I figured, like, that's it. That's the end. That's the end. And then, I, uh, like, two seconds later, I hear, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, <laughs> what's up, Mike? And he goes, were you on television recently? And I go, nah, man. And he goes, you sure? And I go, yeah. I go, well, I'm on Netflix. And he goes, Netflix is amazing. And I go, yeah. He goes, what's your favorite show on Netflix? I, go, I don't know, man. I like House of Cards. Uh, I go, I go. I watched Breaking Bad on Netflix, even though it's not a Netflix show. He goes, my wife likes uh, Breaking Bad. But he said it like, you know, you like shows that my wife likes. <laughs> like you're a bitch. <laughs> Absolute bitch. So then he just like, he kind of nods and I turn around. Then I said, but you know, I, I turn around, I feel his a hand on my shoulder and he's standing above me. And I'm like, holy shit. He leans down and he whispers in my ear. I've been watching a lot of Netflix. <laughs> Shit. that's it that's all he says <laughs> and like I I literally had never thought that that sentence could be terrifying and I was so scared I was scared that he said when he said it and I was like what the fuck man and he goes that's why I recognize you and I go what and he, he holds my DVD and he's like the picture on the DVD is the same picture on Netflix and I go, yeah, yeah, that's the picture. And he goes, yeah, that's why I recognize you. And he goes, give me your phone number. And I'm like, what? So I give, I give him my phone number. We land. I get off. I still think this is over. I'm like, that was a crazy exchange. This is over. The next day, Thursday, I'm sitting in the hotel. I look at my phone. I have a text message from Mike Tyson. And do you know what it says? What? Where's your show? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, dude, the Pittsburgh Improv, where's that? <laughs> I fucking Google it myself. I send it to him. Two seconds later, the phone rings. Hey, Tom. Like, 
what's up, champ? And he goes, uh, we're coming to watch your show tonight, brother. And I go, that's amazing. And he goes, yeah, we're going to watch your work. And I go, I go, that, that's, that's incredible, man. Thank you. And he goes, uh, it's all love. But he said it, you know, like, I feel like that's like a black dude expression. Right. Like, like white guys don't say like, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'll see you tonight, Ronnie. It's all love. <laughs> like, it's not a fucking sentence, you know? So he said that, and I wanted to reciprocate, though, like what he was saying, but I was nervous. And I just go, uh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like silence on the phone. He just goes, good luck at your show. And he hangs up the phone. <laughs> and then that was it. I was like, oh, that's it. I fucked that up. I just told him I loved him. He's not coming. But not only did he fucking come... As soon as I finish the show Thursday, I'm walking to the back of the showroom. He grabs me. He's like, let's go to the green room. And then we go to the green room. And he fucking hangs out for like 40 minutes. I was talking to one of his assistants, and he said when they were in China, China of all places, that the the customs guys, like the guys that are having people detained and fucking shot, uh, they left their post to see Tyson so that Civilians were then passing through customs without being checked because the customs agents left their posts because they wanted to go take a picture with Mike Tyson. Completely nuts. All right, Tom, I want you to call me back after you meet Larry Holmes. I want this just to be Tom Segura's boxing stories. I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. I'll be doing it for sure. All right, pal. Good to talk to you, man. Stay in touch, all man, right? I love you, man. See you soon. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Uh, so that's Tom Segura on Mass. This will be your last chance to get tickets today. Go to the iBang. But this is the thing about Tom, since he's a good storyteller. He's literally got like 50 stories that would any headliner would kill for. And they're just regular life stories. He just tells them so well. I love that story. So It's one of the best of all time. You've done the Where's Your Show thing at Where's me. Where's Your Show? So, and it comes up a lot with us. <laughs> well, somebody will ask me to do something like I'm going out to do that show with Big J tonight. So then Gail will call and just say, where's your show? And I'll be like, I don't know. You'll have to find it. You'll have to Google it. I've been watching a lot of Netflix. <laughs> That's where I know you from. Netflix. My wife watches that show. It's so <laughs> it's damn <all> funny. <laughs> but the idea of being stuck in the sky with Mike Tyson is just crazy to you it's really but surreal i do agree with what he said mike is one of those people that everybody in the world knows who he is and everybody in the world can't believe that they're saying him because i saw him here before and i'm like that's fucking mike tyson yeah. i think i was doing the ona show when mike tyson came in and it just felt crazy i mean it's weird enough to share a flight with a c-list celebrity let alone somebody as legendary. Because you see a C-list celebrity on a on a plane, you're like, this is weird. Yeah, it is like, weird. we're on the same plane mode of transportation. You end up telling people that. Yeah. You end up telling all the time. Who is like, the biggest star you've ever been on a flight with? Um, well, I think it was the same flight as you. With the Mr. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. Who we flew back from L.A. That one was not that big at the time because he was just... Sorry, on, yeah, he was just an SNL kid. But now saying, oh, I've met Jimmy Fallon or I was on a plane with Jimmy Fallon. But do you, did becomes, you notice that he took the time to say hello to everybody getting on the plane like so it was sweet. his plane? Yep. Like, hi, hi. I'm a, I can't believe that you have to live that way. He helped, hi, welcome to the plane. He helped me get my bag. I know, it was a very nice It was a really moment. sweet thing. That's the thing where people, some people run down Jimmy Fallon, and I'll be like, he was really nice to my kid, so I can't join you there. I, hey, Vito, I got a thing from Fez that says your mic is way too low. But I think that you're just whispering instead of talking like a man. That probably was the case. I'm going to project my voice more. Does it sound that way? Does it sound all right to you, Chris? I've seen, Vito sometimes is too far away from the mic. I've told him that he's got to get up on that mic to talk. I think he, it's his rasp. You I can think move that mic closer to you, though. Yeah. You sit way back in your chair. S sometimes. I He's a comfy guy. But if he doesn't have the answer to something, he gets quiet. Instead of like, I don't have that answer. He'll just be like, ah. So, Cleveland. Cleveland's playing. 
Tom Segura on Mass. This is truly a once in a lifetime chance to come to uh, Sirius. He's uh, got his tour going on. He's going to be selling out big theaters all over. He's just great. And you get a chance to come in on Mass where we just talk. If there's any show that's as fun for the people who show up as it is for the people in it, it's on Mass. Because it's just like we're all just in this room together having a conversation. It's great. Much like being on a plane with someone. It is like being on a plane. Chris, famous people on a plane? Trevor Noah. Flight we share. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. When you go to Montreal, uh, particularly when you go Air Canada, not the goddamn small thing that Don put us in this year. I was on a flight with David Arquette and Courtney Cox Arquette That's and big. their children. That's big. One of which is named Coco, I believe. You're weirdly stalkerish <laughs> towards kids. but uh, And I think Dave's, David's already working on a second outside family. I think he has oh, two yeah. kids. On the outside of They're that. split now, right? Like, completely. They're donezo. All right, sir. You know why it came up? He goes, I never really cared for the show Friends. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking That's about? That's my bread and butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, do you know the people that were on that show? And how good Phoebe was on that show? Phoebe alone would be a good show. Agreed. The Phoebe show. Chandler. Joey? Uh, Joey, of course. Russell, Bob, Bob, uh, <laughs> hmm. Hank the Dwarf. All those people were on Friends together. Sarah McPans tweets to us. Mike Tyson whispered, "These violent delights have violent ends." <laughs> <laughs> that Tyson trip is hilarious. But it also, Sigourney, without saying it, you know that he's in first class. Yeah. Yeah. Classy. By the way, on that flight up, Trevor Noah helped me put my tray away from across the hall. Like, he saw that I was fucking with putting my tray down. He was like, let me just get the tray for you. Oh, yeah, I didn't like the feeling. It kind of made me felt like less than a man. I go like this. I'll put my own goddamn trays away. Trevor I want Noah. it down. No, I act like thank you. Because I was rocking out very hard and with my eyes closed. They always have to come by and give me a nudge. Hey, stop rocking out. You hear that they're talking. They have announcements for you. I'm just like, surrender, <laughs> surrender. <laughs> so anyway, that's going to be a really, really fun unmasked uh, go to the iBang. This will be your last time to sign up for it today, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. Up on the iBang today also is uh, the Bears fans versus Jags fans. They're having a fight. Two shitty teams spend the time fighting. You know, I know you've been in parking lot fights before. <laughs> um, growing up in Philadelphia, I saw a lot of quick burst fights that take place, <laughs> including a guy wearing the wrong hat just being kicked in the side of the head during the game. Ah. Somebody just went over and kicked him in the side of the head. <laughs> Where was his like hat across was. Across the aisle for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but here's some people just getting into it at this game. It's up on the eye bang also. And wear a shirt on. What are you talking about, Chicago? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself, Jaguar. Go fuck yourself, Jaguar. I'm actually going to join this guy. Uh, fuck you, Jaguar fan, fuck you little bitch. Jaguar? Yeah, fuck you, bitch. Right, Jaguar? Yeah, no, I'll join this shit. Yourself. Go you fuck yourself. You fucking prick. You get down? Go fuck you yourself. You get down? Little prick. You get down? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, That's both the teams hey. stink. <laughs> Where was this, in Chicago or Jacksonville? Where'd this shit go down? This was in Chicago. That guy doesn't want anybody to say anything bad about his hometown. That's hometown pride that yeah. you have right there. I always, I always feel really bad for the dude who, like, okay, so there's, like, the pain in the ass dude right. who clearly wants a fight, but he's not, like, starting the fight. He's just being a dick. Then there's this guy who walks up and he's like, oh, you want to throw down? Cause I'll, and then gets, like completely Fucked knocked up. out like immediately yeah i don't care for any of them i don't care if they all got shot and killed i mean if you're fighting over a football game and you're older than every football player there that's really embarrassing it is fun. and why i mean here's a bunch of jags fans just stomping a bears fans and the other Bears fans don't jump in. That wouldn't happen years ago. This is what is the problem of these expensive tickets. 
in the old days. That would have been a brawl. Those Jags fans would have been killed just for being from the wrong state. I don't believe that you wear your shirt to somebody else's. Thing. You just I don't do it. I wouldn't do it. To me, that's like showing up at a wedding with the ex-husband from the first wedding. And oh, I thought like, you meant in a wedding dress, which oh, is I've, also the same. I've worn white to a wedding before. And I'll go, she knows exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> this hot weather that we're having today is 115 degrees in the city. Disgusting. Um, I saw this. Uh, Washington, D.C. is at 125. And Florida is 300 degrees today. The entire East Coast is under the hottest temperatures outside of Mercury. It's actually better if you lived on the sun today than if you lived on the planet Earth. Now, you know I was enjoying having an autumn. You were having an autumn I for was yourself. having an autumn. Yeah. And now it's starting to remind me of the feeling of Halloween when I was a kid, which was hot and muggy mm -hmm. and not fun for all the things that go along with Halloween. For example, wearing costumes to me, like kids up north have this thing where it's like, I don't want to wear a jacket over my costume because then it ruins the costume. Yeah. In Florida, it was like, what can I wear that I'm not going to sweat off the makeup? I don't want to be like in a big bear Ch suit. Children in Florida go out every year as the same character, swamp ass. <laughs> Just people with wet little asses walking around trying to get some candy for themselves. Were you even a trick-or-treater being in the city, Chris? It was off and on in my house, like it, because sometimes I do like go in the apartment building I lived in, uh, but it always sucked. It was always like dude, shit. No one how wanted... adorable to see this little idiot kid walking around an apartment building. I know. What were you dressed up as? Super Spider Man, I think one year. Aww. Aww, Spidey. Spidey, you know your Spidey senses. Then you come back Aww, with a pillowcase with three pieces of candy in it. <laughs> with three Some people pennies. answer, yeah. Three people oh. answer the door. What about you on the Upper West Side, Vito? Well, like, I have a really big building, so I trick-or-treated in my building, and I got loaded up on candy. It Your life great. is a lot better than Chris's. It was, you were only missing one parent. Yeah. Now, the neighborhood I live in, it's very neighborhoody, so the kids are all over the place. They're trick-or-treating, but I live in an apartment building, so what I do is I sit on the stoop with the candy so the kids don't have to, you know, buzz into our building. Right. And then it's just kids who are walking to other houses on the street. And they're just wondering who wants candy. So. Yeah, so then they just, like, come up. That's fun, because you like to hand out candy. I like to hand out candy, because I like to see the kids all dressed up. Yeah. But I'm very I'm very particular about the candy that I pick, because I remember the feeling of getting terrible candy. So I never want a shitty candy to give out. Like, last year, I had Kit Kats, and I had Whoppers. And the Whoppers were very popular, and they were really psyched. Really sad because they don't one. normally get to see a whopper. Can yeah. I tell you what is the worst candy of all time to get as a child? What's that? Any kind of licorice. Oh, black licorice disgusts me to this day. If you get one of those things where like it's like a package of good and plenty, like here's the, here's it's the like thing. a little like mini size. It's a really good point. It's a mini size, right? Yeah. So they're not good, and there's not plenty. <laughs> I mean, this makes it. You're calling yourself plenty, and you're like, there's six of these ugly things. All right, what would you be less happy about? Good and plenty or candy corn? Which Disgusting I to me. Candy per corn. personally find candy corn to be the most vile thing. Uh, there's nothing different between candy corn and wax. They're the same thing. Matter of fact, earwax is what <laughs> they should call it. Kids, would you like a little triangle of earwax for yourself? There's one purpose and one purpose only for candy corn and that's to stick them in your teeth to pretend like you have pointy vampire teeth and then you're to spit them out do not consume. by the way there are wax teeth like that right. wax is the operative word <laughs> i would get a shitload of candy corn from my building for whatever reason I remember that was like the one thing i remember getting i hate it it's not a re it's not food. It's not a real. It's barely any sugar in it. It's disgusting. So a good and plenty or a candy corn. Which so you'd rather eat good and plenty. Give me the good and plenties. I'm not happy about this, but give me the good and plenties. Okay. What about you? That I hate. Yeah. Or what I like which, to get. Which one do you find to be more disgusting? Well, I hate the taste of black licorice. The thing about a candy corn, it's, it doesn't taste so bad as much as it tastes disappointing. <laughs> There's no taste to it. Yeah. So it's like. Would you like some wax air? Mm. Why? Why bother? But there is like a very subtle flavor. And whatever that subtle flavor is, it's just not good. It's just not good. 
So your question is, would you rather just nothing, just dull, or would you like a bad flavor? Well, here's the, here's the thing. I think as you get older, the high sugar things are inedible to you. Like, I don't understand how when I was a little kid, I ate a pixie stick, suck it. it. Oh, hell yeah. Because if I put one in now, I couldn't do it. I'll go into sugar shock. It like actually hurts the back of my throat. To if even trying something like too sweet. I had my legs locked up from a pixie stick. <laughs> and I was just slaying on the ground. Like, I was just flopping around like bacon. I couldn't be able to do it now. I'd rather bite into a bullet. <laughs> I remember loving blue pixie sticks. Just the blue, blue out of them? Because there's yeah. no difference in the taste, right? I felt like blue the was blue like is, more acidic. Blue is like a little bit more it. tart. An acidic <laughs> taste. Tart, acidic, whichever. <laughs> It's like I wanted to burn a little bit. <laughs> the only difference now is like if I were to eat good and plenty, like I think I could get away with the idea of it's just medicinal. Like licorice, isn't that like good for your stomach? I I'd be I like, don't think eh. so. I, th- I thought that something in licorice was like calming for your stomach. Uh, uh, so nice. Jersey, Jersey Sure Bob said anyone who gives out pennies a trick or treat should be shot. Oh, that's terrible. But here's the thing. That normally happens to old people who didn't know anybody was coming to their house. So they're scrambling. <laughs> Here's some pennies, kids. Okay, Pug Christ, I just want to say, said to me, dude, a Whopper stinks. These kids were psyched what? on the Whoppers. Really psyched. What's wrong with the Whopper? It's a good thing. Yeah. How could anybody say there? Is- First of all, a Whopper, you can actually suck on it and crush it all down. Implode. Like, make it implode. Yep. Love to implode Fantastic. a Whopper. I just eat them straight up. I just <laughs> swallow them. them. I remember <laughs> swallow them with water. <laughs> um, there used to be a thing that you could buy at the store. Maybe there still is, but you could get whoppers in like a big quart, like you were buying a quart of milk, like a cardboard. Oh quart. Yeah, yeah, and it would just be packed with whoppers, and you're just. Your mom turns around and you're just pouring Whopper straight in your mouth. Like, that's supposed to last until Thursday. She's just, you're taking in 18 Whoppers at the same time. You're like, good Whoppers. You're going to choke on those Whoppers. <laughs> but, you know, when you're a kid, that's an exciting thing, yeah. a Whopper. It's very exciting. The kids were happy about it. I'll tell you something that would be too sweet for me to have now, too, sugar babies. Remember, like you could oh, get that's a sh- the one that's like kind of sticks to your teeth, sticks right to your teeth, but then leaks sugar. Right, as you're eating, they had the sugar daddy, which was a big stick. Yeah, that was like a pop. Yeah, you had to make a, you had to say, look, I'm gonna have sh- the sugar daddy for the next six and a half hours, <laughs> and the sugar baby was just like a smaller, more meth style hit. I would, I would never be able to eat that now. No, never. I can't eat Swedish fish anymore. If I eat a Swedish fish, it just molds around my teeth. and I, it does I never happen. liked them in the first place. I liked them as a kid. I really liked them as a kid. I, I can't remember the last time I had one. I, don't I like think anything, back on it affectionately. Yeah. I don't like anything that's too gelatinous. <laughs> you don't like a gummy. No, I don't like a gummy I've bear. noticed this about you gummy, over the years. I love gummy, gummy bears. Snake. I love gummy bears. You might have they have gummy worm. Like, you're, like they're acting like, oh, you're putting fucking insects and snakes in your mouth. I go, I'm not. Which is very popular around Halloween time because people like to make, you know, like gummy worm desserts. Right. And then they don't go together. It'll be like, this is the dirt. Here's and then the, the worms are in the dirt. It doesn't really go. Mm, this but. was made for when I was a kid with the people who did their house. Don't you scare me. I'm here to scare you. All right, <laughs> doesn't work if we're both going boo at each other. Yeah, let the kids do the scaring. This is a kids' day, not an adults' day. I was going over it with my my little cousins about their costumes, and I don't understand either one of their costumes. Right, what are you, one of them is a pop star who I've never heard of. Oh. I don't. I've never. I can't even remember. You know why? Because they like K-pop. They watch. They watch YouTube instead of anything else. And then the side? other one is a YouTube. It's a reference to like a famous <clears throat> YouTuber. Yeah. And a character he plays on YouTube. Oh, man. And I was like, well, send it to me. Like, let me check it out. And he's just like, um, all right, I'll send it to you. But I'm not going to lie. It's a little offensive. So which one said it, Vincent? No, no. This is Ben. Yeah, they watch YouTube instead of TV. Yeah. They sit in their house, in their room, watching YouTube. And then, so he sent it to me, and I was so confused by this character. But it it's something that people watch, yeah, I guess. I love it. These YouTube celebrities are just, just, young kids love them. 
But I really felt truly old. Like, I realized I'm that person when the kid says, this is what my Halloween costume is. Like, what? I've never heard of that. What about a ghost? What about a spooky ghost? (laughs) We'll make it here. (laughs) Um, A nice, scary ghost costume. Here's Andy. Andy, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. And we uh we give out Gatorades at our house. Would you consider that a bad candy? Because all the kids seem to love it. That's, hmm. First of all, the thing about it is, it seems bad, but you're out walking around. What about a f- refreshing drink? You know. Yep, that, that's I, exactly what my wife said about twelve years ago. We started giving them out, and now you can hear the kids are halfway down the block. Hey, it's the Gatorade house coming up. Oh, that's nice to be known as the Gatorade people. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Just, my, my my initial thing was no. But then I thought of how many nights I was out and I was thirsty. I'm also thinking <laughs> the price has got to be a lot. I mean, the Gatorade per kid is a lot more expensive. Oh, they probably than... come to like small things. Are there mini Gatorades? There's tiny Gatorades. Yeah. Okay. For children. Because I was going to suggest, what were those like little pots of like neon colored drink with a little foil top? Oh, uh, uh, quarter, quarter waters. Yeah. What are they called? Quarter waters. Never even heard of this. Yeah, <laughs> like this is like a YouTube started me. You'll never know it was someone you see them. They're shaped like a <laughs> oh yeah 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 I do yeah. know those. It's all those thinking. I used to want my mom to get them and she wouldn't. <laughs> oh yeah, I was the best. The same way. My mom never bought well, any of that all, kind of stuff. They're sugary and you can shoot it basically. <laughs> right. in the car. Yep. I mean, it's gone in a second. <laughs> Love grape. It's the best. Um, <laughs> Another a dollar. Jesus. Yeah, that'd be a lot to give out. You all have a right. hundred. That's a hundred bucks. Uh, Jack in D.C. Holy shit, I'm going to be the big swinging dick in my neighborhood this year and be the Gatorade house. Yeah, be the Gatorade guy. <laughs> maybe, right. maybe, maybe, was, we'll yeah. maybe we'll get to the point. Yeah, maybe we'll get to the point no one's giving out anything but Gatorade. You definitely want to be the guy who all the kids say, that's the big swinging dick in the neighborhood. <laughs> Can I tell you something? In my neighborhood, my mom was the big swinging dick because she would make homemade Candy apple taffies. I thought that was your sister. Yeah, you're being mean. They, at a eulogy, they gave a lot of credit to my aunt that belonged to my mom. And Gail finds it funny. Well, I felt terrible because... No, you were t- laughing. No, I was not laughing. I didn't think it was funny. I'm on I'm on my grandmother's side. It's too late. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were known for that. And like people are like... Hey, is your mom making those apple taffies? But here's what it was. It was an apple dunked in this hot maple syrup that that would just make this clear maple thing that crunched like candy and you're biting into the apple. And then with a sharp stick stuck into it. And then it's homemade. None of this stuff would have been able to give it out today. So this isn't caramel, It's and it's not candy, like the red candy apple. No. This is like a maple a pure taffy. maple, A pure maple syrup. That sounds incredible. Yeah. And our whole house would be filled with them because the kids would come from everywhere to get those things. And then later you could have a sharp stick to <laughs> poke at people. But there was also the thing, and this was great, this one guy in our neighborhood, he turned off the lights and was just watching TV from the back room instead of giving out candy, right? So I'm not going to say what it was. It was one of the Smiths. I'm going to say the truth. It was Jimmy. And he took the the apple taffy and blasted it through the guy's picture window, right? So later when the cop showed up, he said, I was biting into my apple taffy. It slipped and went through the window. And I was actually on, honestly proud about that. Oh, yeah. I don't think there was a rest, but his family may have had to replace that window. So what about you, Jack? What's your candy? First of all, I'm, I'm looking at Lincoln Financial Field right now, so fly, eagle, fly. Hey, um, I, I told the screener I was going to say uh, circus peanuts, which are, you know, fucking abhorrent candy, but I don't think they really qualify as a Halloween candy. Can I tell you something, though? Uh, I like a circus yeah. peanut. I it, do like, yeah. It tastes like something, yeah. It, it, it tastes like something that you would take to, I don't know, maybe cure polio. <laughs> It's a disgusting orange soft taste. There's something about the taste of them that actually tastes dusty to me. Oh, yeah. Like, they release the dust like, as you buy it. Like they them. always seem old. Yeah. Even if they're fresh, yeah. it still seems like that just like it dries your mouth out. Like yeah, they're horrific gotta... and yet they're addictive. <laughs> it's like a circus peanut. That, that's apocalypse candy. It is. It's, yeah. it's going to last long after they drop you know, the bomb. 
Here's one that folks would legitimately hand out in my neighborhood, Necco Wafers. They are, uh, thanks so much for calling too, Jack. Uh, they are horrific. I've stated this before. I, I actually really like a Necco I wafer. Get a picture of the Necco wafer. I don't know what it is. It's just like I, I like chalky candy. There's one of the flavors. You go through and there's all different things. But you get to a certain flavor that's just a brown gray. Yeah, I and like it. I don't know where that would even exist. It's I like, horrific. I like a Necco wafer and I like his Smarty. I'm not, I can't think of another, but you know, like that, just like chalky candy. Well, first of all, let's say this. Smarty's fabulous. It's a million and a half times better than a Necco wafer. <laughs> a Necco wafer is just a larger, less tart Smarty. It seems like if you're eating a Necco wafer, you should be looking at the diving horse <laughs> in Atlantic City. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> that sounds great. Now, there's an old school grandma candy that I'm crazy about. It's called a Mary Jane. This is... Uh, maple based, yeah, as well. Similar, wouldn't you say? Similar to a sugar daddy, sugar baby situation. Well, it's not as sugary sweet, but even look at the wrapper on that. Looks oh like God. something that Babe Ruth would have had in his pocket. <laughs> it's depression era candy. <laughs> it is. It doesn't mean as bad. A Cracker Jack is depression era candy. Delicious, and it's great. But they got rid of the box. I don't want a bag of Cracker Jacks. Mm -mm. No one goes to the ball game and gets uh, peanuts and Cracker Jacks anymore. Do they sell them at your games, Cracker Jacks? Yeah. Yeah, they still walk up. Bag or box? Uh, both. If the guy is walking around with Cracker Jacks, it's a box. If you buy it by the beer stand, it's a bag. I'm going to say, I'm going to uh, tweet out a thank you to the Mets <laughs> for keeping the box going. I love it. I love it too. It's, a, it's the best. And then, how come it doesn't get sold? Just like in the grocery store, I'm like you don't. To. There's just no market for it. Yeah, but People like you don't, don't want a cracker jack. Yeah, but you don't really see it. Do they like have an aisle where it's just like the boxes of cracker jack? I don't think I've seen that. Well, one thing you never have to worry about is that everything is available online, no matter what it is. It's out there. Yeah. You can find it. Yeah, even if it's gone. <laughs> but to me, a cracker jack's. Reminds me of like the Monopoly game men that it's just like, oh, does this still exist? <laughs> Someone would just make a little metal iron <laughs> for a kid to push around a board. Wasn't it like a sailor on the box? Yeah, of course yeah. there was. Yeah, sailor. Yeah, and with his dog. little dog. I kind of was hoping that that sailor, because it looks like a harmless guy, but I hope that he would hook up with the Morton Salt girl who was... Oh, yeah, they they seem like they're in the same story. Yeah, they do seem like they're in the same, you know, turn-of-the-century story. Like, look, there's nothing about her that looks like it belongs in modern America <laughs> at all. And she doesn't even know how to carry fucking salt. That's a First giant of, drum of salt she has. Well, yeah, for the whole family, Chris. I mean, a lot of the meat had to be salted because they didn't have refrigeration at the time. Cured meat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and she has, like also has weird little feet going in different directions. <laughs> That's probably the polio that fucked her up. That's disgusting for you to say. That's really offensive. I, I think that she, she's way too spread out for today's cartoons. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she's at a full gap there. And people would be un, un, unlikely to get behind that today. Everyone loves that gap. She, she's clearly a little child um jessica i mean disgust hi hi honey how are you hi good benningtons love you guys Thank yeah we love you, we love you. We love you more <laughs> hey i just want to tell you guys that i know you hate candy corn but hate it if you take candy corn and try it with peanuts and take it at the same time it tastes like a payday payday candy bar uh, I'm saying this. I'm sending a text to myself to try this experiment because I do Delicious. like to mix things. I would be willing to give that a shot, although I'm not, I'm not even the biggest payday fan. Payday. No, me neither. But I want to know if you can change taste. Like, there's nothing I hate more than just plain popcorn now. I have to have an M and M's peanuts with it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. popcorn and Reese's Pieces are the best. It's the pieces that are disgusting to me. <laughs> it's like you're faking an M&M &M with peanut butter inside. I love a Reese's Oh, pieces. me too. You know why? I actually they're my favorite. favorite. Um, Jessica, you're going into the pretty good prize closet because you got to send the mixing food. Yay! Now, I brought up E.T. 
Did you see that the original painting for the E.T. sold for $400,000? I never knew that that poster was a painting where he's, they're touching fingers. Oh, really? Yeah. So that was... A this painting is, first that they copied into a poster form. That right there, the fa- two fingers touching, E.T. and the little kid, I think his name was, I think his name was Squirrely Bob. <laughs> I and don't think Squirrely so. Bob found E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I remember when I tried to turn my kids on the E.T., they thought it was fucking hokey. They didn't like it. No, we loved it. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. Why did you guys say it so much? <laughs> we were know. just razzing. I was... I don't like that. I'm long. I look at. I'm going right, right, and they're like, "This is stupid." It's never happened. Stupid kids. It happened. If, if it we hurt did, very bad. If we did, it was because we were razzing you. I don't like to be razzed. You know, who knows how long your father's going to last? You should be really <laughs> nice to him. Why? Because your dad's gone. Oh, yeah, Vito's gone. dad's gone. Yeah. What'd you guys do to him? I mean, just razzed. They collect the razzing. They razzed the razzed. A lot of razzing. Um, Old man Stanley. Matt in Chicago wants to give us some shit. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, I just want to let you know that Cracker Jacks is available uh, in boxes. They come in like three packs, and I see them in grocery stores, at least in the Chicagoland area, all the time. So, Now, I believe that it's still out there. Uh, It has been drunched out by Fiddle Faddle and, of course, Crunch and Munch. Oh, yeah. Is it too cold? We can turn that air down. You don't want to get too cold. Um, and I don't, you know, a fiddle faddle, any kind of toffee. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not going to turn it down. It's not a cracker jack, though. It's just not. I've never had a fiddle faddle. Oh, fiddle what? faddle is great. Oh, I've never had a fiddle faddle. What? What is a fiddle faddle? What? Look it's, at it. It's like a toffee covered cracker mm, jack. Damn good. <laughs> well, it's not going to be bad. <laughs> you're you're putting caramel over popcorn. <laughs> you never been to a, a movie house that had like. Some kind of caramel corn. Some of them are even fresh now at the indie places. Delish. It's fantastic. I always go for the um, regular popcorn and just drench in that artificial butter. You like the butter? I don't even popcorn? think they can legally use the name butter for that stuff. It's the juice. They call it bitter. No, it's oil. Butter. You're just having straight oil. Warm oil. Yeah. It destroys the stomach every time. Does it? Oh, God, yeah. It's awful. And yet you do it every time. Every time I go to the theater, yeah. I, have to. I don't go to the theater all too often. You know why I don't like it even more so than the taste is the soakiness. Yeah, yeah. like on your hand, and then it's you just disgusting. have to like sit like this for the rest of the movie. It's Fine. it's greasy. Mm-hmm. Oh god, yeah. Oh, the grease. Yeah, he loves his grease. He can have <laughs> grease. Now, what's the last time you've been to a movie? I can't remember the last. Time. Oh, um, I saw Midnight Special like six months ago. What's that's, Midnight Special? That's a movie by the guy Jeff Nichols, the guy who did Mud. And um, oh, yeah. take shelter. It's a kid with like the superpowers. How was it? It was very good. Very good or stupid? It was not stupid. It was very good. It was great. Michael Shannon, amazing in it. I want to see this one big movie that's coming out where aliens come to the planet and they go find a linguist, this girl who's a linguist, because she will know what they're trying to say. I always like when people have a special skill and then they're pushed into a bigger than life situation with it. Um, for example, do you love the movie Armageddon? Because well, that's exactly what you're talking about. No one would believe that it would be easier to take guys who <laughs> try to find oil and make them into astronauts than it would be to train astronauts. They'll never get it. <laughs> <laughs> to drill? Please. An astronaut could never figure that out. I mean, out. even if they took one guy, you know what I mean? Like, just to be there going, no, no, no. <laughs> don't do that. Do this. No, we need the then whole just team. Fill this plane full of wildcatters. <laughs> <laughs> and most of them look like they didn't give a shit that the earth was going to blow up. You know what I mean? Like, they, they didn't care much about their mission. They were dead inside, really. They were just <laughs> looking to get messed up. Most Like most days, if they didn't have this mission, they'd just be getting whacked. That's true. <laughs> they were wildcatters. You, okay, dude, easy. Everybody is on your... <laughs> I'm the one who came up with the term wildcatters. You don't have to now scream it back at me like what? a man. They're fucking wildcatters, Wildcat. <laughs> I'm going to go. Um, hey, uh, Sam, what's up, buddy? Sam of Virginia. Yeah, Sam. Um, I remember growing up, we used to actually give out uh, caramel popcorn balls. Take caramel, melt it, 
How were they? And rolled the popcorn up with, oh, they were great. I think it's sad that you can't have homemade stuff. I I just missed that era, I feel. Because by the 80s, right. that was nobody did it anymore. Like everybody, but 70s and we before. Always, it felt like so fun when I was little where you would bite into something and like, is there a pin in here? What's going to happen? You know, you would bite so slow. But you know how you hear about people fucking with stuff like that? When I was a kid, I went out, and unfortunately, this is a true story, and one of the houses, they were giving out packets of la- of razors, right? Mm-hmm. But somebody had put some <laughs> apple in there. So when I went to shave, <laughs> I was just rubbing apple all over my face. Oh, my God. And t- trust me, it's 10 times worse than if you bite into an apple that has a razor in it, <laughs> than if you shave with a razor that has an apple in it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And I had a date that night. No. And the girl says to me, do you smell apple? And I'm lying my ass off. I'm like, no, I don't. But I knew it was my face she was smelling. So I just punched her in the stomach. Oh, God. See, I, oh, my God. Yeah. She had it coming. Thank you, Chris. No, I disagree. Well, I don't see the difference between men and women. I think you can punch both in the stomach. I don't think you should. Well, you try living with a nickname Apple Face. No one wants to. It's horrible. I'm sorry. Right. Joey has come up with what he believes is a list. Joey, a new Rochelle. What do you got, buddy? Ronnie. Yes, sir. Take five. You ever have them? Oh, a take five. Chris, this is an take old five. school uh, candy. Go ahead and write it up. And Well, the funny what? thing is, I really only see them Halloween time. And I think they're the best Halloween candy around. Well, I never thought of them as Halloween candy. Looks like a hundred grand. Well, oh, so much different. So much different. Oh, night and, and day, Chris. Okay. All right. Damn okay. it. That's really insulting. Sorry, take five. I've never had take five. Yeah, I, I don't see that as a Halloween candy, but I would be I would be pleased. I'll tell to you find what, that. Out of all the bars, and I would never buy this for myself, but if they come in a thing and there's a little one, a Mr. Good bar is delicious what I would call trash candy. You can taste the trash chocolate in it. <laughs> yeah. It's something that the Swiss and the French would puke from. Yeah, I love it. I love it, Mr. Good Bar. It's delicious. Mr. It's really tacky, though. Don't, can we agree to that? It's fine. Yeah, it's I bad. Mean, but... I mean, you can even look at it and see there's nothing rich about that chocolate whatsoever. Mm-mm. It's actually even waxier than the, the standard Hershey bar. It's like they yeah. take their worst chocolate. No, they take their worst chocolate and their worst peanuts, and yet there's something delicious. It's like the runoff. Mm-hmm. It's the, the runoff there. It's definitely my number one in the the minis assortment. Like Mine crackle. too. I'll like get crackle too. That's number I, two. I don't hate a crackle. Texture? A crackle oh is God, a lot great. like another type of thing too. It's um it's almost like when Marvel comes along and gets a hero like the other one. There's <laughs> a what is the crackle version that Crunch bar? Thank you. It's a Nestle's crunch. Yeah. yeah. A crackle is a ripoff of that. And yet, no problem with it. Yeah. I think it's Go ahead, better. Give me the rip offs. You can't say it's better. I think Chris. it's better. I think it's, it's thicker than the uh, than the. Uh, what you're crunch. saying is the monkeys are better than the Beatles. That's what I'm saying. That right kind now. of statements can't be made. There's your buddy, you know. Make sure you give him a big, give him a big up. See, <laughs> see ya. Hope you had a good show. Start slamming on the glass so he sees you. <laughs> Lick it. Lick oh, the yeah, glass. Right. <laughs> Lick the glass until you spot it. Now he's nervously not looking over there. I no. saw the make eye contact. He was like, don't ruin this for me. Now, I have a friend. Now Lord's here staring at the back of Vito's head. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to make Vito blush. Have you noticed right. that? Yeah. He's Vito's, like a little uh, blushing bride. <laughs> don't look for me and my friend. Here's TJ and Best Chester. What's up? Now, hey, buddies. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to see Pepper Hicks take a blind taste test between a Crackle and a Nestle Crunch. I'll never guess oh, which one's which. I, <laughs> I would love to shit. do any blind taste <laughs> test. Setting that up yeah, for set tomorrow. Up. I'm a big fan of blind taste tests. I've got <laughs> oh, a million in my career. Oh, no, we we need guess to the taste of the cereal. <laughs> Yeah. When we were kids, we would do the old uh, flavor ice and yeah. you know, blindfold my buddy and see if he could uh, you know, tell what was the red, the blue, the green. Yeah. Nailed it. Uh, but what I was calling about was this Chicago popcorn. So I, I got roped into this big bag of uh, like this Costco. It's half caramel corn and half cheddar cheese corn all mixed together. And you eat it together. Well, what's it the, sounds insane. What's the famous Chicago popcorn place? I don't know. Um... Uh, 
the, I'm, the, the one with like the the cheddar and the yeah the, you, they they'll you'll get it it'll be cheddar and then regular yeah, and then caramel good. corn and it's like the best in the world we had it for a little while in New York carrots carrots yeah, popcorn yeah. so right what it, it's that whole sweet and salty thing and you can't stop eating it you can't get Cheese out bags. of it you all right thanks buddy um. On Father's Day, I always get this pie uh, brought to me. Mm-hmm. It's true. like uh, it was like a caramel pie with like sea salt on the top of it. Yeah, I would call it a it's a salty honey custard pie. Salty honey custard pie, so delicious. Fez would bring me one every what? Father's Day. Oh, no, so nice. Fez. me, huh? I bring it to you. I remember Fez bringing me one. That was Fez's thing. No, I remember. Four and twenty blackbirds is what? in Brooklyn. Yeah, Fez got month there all the time. No, it was me. Mm. I'm the one. All right, you're both. You both have brought it to me before. Chris has never has, right? Mm-mm, no. Why? I thought it was, I thought it was Fez's thing. I would never. But what's your thing with me? What do you bring me that I like? What's your thing? <laughs> I have some bookings for later today. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday we were going through the the number of bookings that we wouldn't do on the show. And one name came up that set off an alarm. Yes. And I had to read back and go, okay, I'll get that person in here. <laughs> <laughs> what is with you and the bookings? Why do you feel like that's your big thing? It's, it's just one of my many things, but that's, just, that's something I bring to you. Do you think of that as a treat for me? To say yes or no to some bookings? Hey, Ron, here have this delicious treat, this list of names. Chris, can I just break before we end the show today? Yeah, we have to. Oh, God. Sorry. You know what? I need one of those Fez buys just to make me chill out a bit. I'll text Fez. You're right. I'm the one who brings them. Oh, uh, Fez will know. We'll no. break. Back. Wrap it all up. Bennington. It's the uh, Bennington show. Uh, just getting ready to wrap this one up. Tonight is the big uh, show that I'm going to be doing called, is it Roast Battle, Chris? Roast Masters. Roast Masters. Yes. And people will be mastering each other's roasts. And then I'll be judging along with, I believe, Rich Voss. Rich Voss, Robert Kelly, Mike Lawrence, and Big J. Okerson. Ooh, that's a, yeah, that's that's a, a big fun crowd. crowd. That's a big crowd, yeah. And we'll be st- saying stuff like, good roast to that guy. Yeah, I like the way you got him. And then why didn't you go harder at them? Why didn't you make fun of the fact there's something bad about them? Maybe you could call someone like Kenny Rogers Roasters. Just like, just came up with that just now. Yeah, I don't want to do anything that's not going to get a laugh. Oh, okay. Seems like that would get a really big laugh. All right, let me try it. Okay. Hey, Vito, uh, tonight, let's see if one of these guys can turn into a Kenny Rogers roaster. <laughs> that's not the kind of it's laugh not... I'm looking for. He wouldn't sell it for you. Yeah, I, so, I thought no. he was going to sell it. It did not really work did. in the lab. <sighs> so scratch this one off. Catch, scratch, fever that. That's good. Thanks, Chris. That's, That's good, really man. good. Mm. Well, Rogers roasted. He really supports you. All you right. and only you. That's supposed to be. Look, you I can. You know what that means, Chris Stanley. I a lot of trouble over this poster now for the Thanksgiving show. Make sure you have them pay if they want all the big changes done to it. Okay. Okay. It's annoying some of our people. Got it. It's another what I call it, Dennis Falcone. <laughs> Put that in the Dennis <laughs> Falcone file. Is, is Dennis behind this? I think he may be, because he works for Sirius XM. Falcone file. Mm-hmm. Poster. Got it. The other day I said to him, you smell foul, Cone. <laughs> Good. You got a big Roastmaster's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> No, Nick at night, I don't want to talk about soccer, but thanks for bringing the ball by. Jeez, every day with him, his soccer balls. He loves it. Soccer Soccer ball and liquor is his big joke. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck it, Nick at night, does it again. (laughs) Chris, it's at the end of the show today, I'm going to give you and Vito a a chance to see what you want to talk about. Because I haven't really given you guys much chance. I feel like I'm going back hot now, are we... Okay, I'll swing it back around. You know what? And we should set it up nice and cool for the next Yes. Yeah, so he likes it nice and cool. Ice this thing down. You sell, yo, Isis? You just did Isis. No, 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 no,
writes this thing down. Hold on, I'm getting the number for 911. Just don't do that, man. I only know the first two numbers. I can never remember the last number. You should put it in your speed dial. No one yeah. tell him that third number. Siri, what's the number for Homeland Security? <laughs> oh, my God. Why? <laughs> There's no reason to call Homeland. I thought, sure. ever? Seems not like you got a lot to be afraid of, young not, man. Not today. Nothing concerning me. Well, it's just one of a long list I have. Things you want to talk about today, Chris. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you the one. We have. Uh, we still have to, some 30s days, 30 song songs to listen to from the protest. Look, we, do we have enough time to get into it? We have 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes, four songs. All right. I guess we're going to have to do 30 seconds. Right, Judge. Uh, tell us what the first one is. All right. The first one is. Franz Ferdinand Demagogue. Well, first of all, let's set up this bit. This website, which one is it? 30 Days, 30 Songs. They're trying to give 30 protest songs in 30 days. Now they get some big names. Franz yeah. Ferdinand That's a good name. is a fine name to be able to get through. These aren't any local licks, you know. They're going for headliners. All right, let's take a listen. Demagogue. Yeah. My only problem is I wish they would have said Demagogue more, but because I love that. Uh... And they did not have me, but they didn't have me at all until they said your pussy grabbing fingers. Yeah, that's when he, they really got me. Yeah. I liked, I liked, uh, I liked it. I think it has like a Mick Jagger sexy, like if you right. can Mick Jagger sexy dance to a rock song, yeah. I'm in. Chris? Smash. <laughs> wow. What'd you like? If you got on? The, the pussy fingers? Pussy grabbing is a reference. Love it. <laughs> okay. What's the next one we got? Josh Ritter. This with the temptation. Oh, I love his dad, John Redder from Three's Company. <laughs> is the temptation of Adam a live cut? Oh, good. I like a live cut. All right, let's take a listen to it. And then one night, All right, that's the temptation of Adam. I think it's got a very Arlo Guthrie f uh, sound, Simon and Garfunkel sound. I give I it a big it. Uh, smash. Yeah, I dug it too. Smash, Josh Ritter. Give a smash on your hands. Uh, let's move on to the next one. We've only these are all songs against. Uh, Trump, part of the 30 for 30 series. And who, who's the next one? <laughs> this is Tao with Before You Vote. Tao, like a dish Tao? Tao. Is it like Dow? Or maybe Dow? T H A O? Oh, T H, I don't know. No. Thou. Thou. I would say Thou. Thou is the lead singer and guitarist of the band Thou in the Get Down. Oh, boy. I hope we didn't say something dirty. Yeah. Oh, no. All right, here's Please the, don't make fun of us. Here's Tao. Or Thou. I not only thought it was good for this, but it might have been the best song I've ever heard in my entire life. I vote absolutely, yeah. It's right up my alley. Yeah. Weird girl music? Yeah. Best shit ever. Uh, Chris? Smash Tao. Or Thou. <laughs> You're hard to do a show with, dude. You're <laughs> hard to do a show with. What's the next one? And this is Elvi. Elvira? Just Elvi. Mm-hmm. Are These My Jets? Oh, I like the idea of that. Boop, boop, music. Boop, boop, boop. Yep. I always said I wish Beck had a deeper voice, <laughs> and now I have it. Are these my jets? I don't know, but you got me voting against Trump. <laughs> this is the song that turned <laughs> yeah, this a is nation. The one that turned me around. This song is great, and I had the same feeling. I was like, "Are you asking me if I like Beck? Yes, I do. Yeah, so I'm in." These my backs. <laughs> I still think Trump's gonna win, but love the song. Okay. <laughs> you, you know what? Free speech. I love it. Peace, dude. Peace. There's uh, Judy Gold on CNN right now, talking about people walking out on Amy Schumer. I think she's gonna be on Amy's side. I have a feeling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just an inkling that she might be on Amy's side. I don't think that uh, Judy's gonna be going there, going, "Hey, entertain first, okay? That's why uh, we came here." <laughs> so if you like to switch over to CNN, I get it. Vito, we only have a couple minutes left in the show. Two. You got something short and sweet? Did you guys see that Leonardo DiCaprio wants to take Captain Planet and he wants to make an environmentally conscious movie about it with like a dramatic storyline? Well, that was the reason for Captain Planet in the first place. But so, yeah, it was to teach your young generation about ecology. And he wants it to be about a washed-up Captain Planet who needs to find the planet Tears 
And I'm just curious if he's going to, if it's just producing or he's going to be Captain Planet. Because I want to see him be Captain Planet. Well, you keep an eye on this story, Vito. This is going to, this is your baby to take home, all right? Every time you find out something new about it, you run back to us. A little something called Cappy News that I want you every day to have a little bit of Cappy News. I call you Captain Hammock, the man who believes he's (laughs) sleeping in the sky. Uh, Vito, you're very quiet today, but you got a prize? You got a little present? Yeah. My boy, uh, Lord Sear, gave me a free copy of NBA 2K17 on PS4. Yeah, that's nice. You guys really are friends. Yeah, that's my boy. He told me uh, sometime after this show, I'm going to go hang out in his show for a little, see what he does. Sweet. Nice. Sweet. Well, you're making friends. Um, That's it for us. It's time we mosey. If you're in New York City tonight, I'll be hanging out with uh, Big J and... uh, Rich Voss, Rich Bobby Foss, Kelly. Rich Voss, Robert Kelly. Mike Lawrence. Mike Lawrence. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. I want to tell everybody this. A person who doesn't wish to live a public life anymore went and saw Bobby Kelly. <sighs> Secretly? In Tampa, oh. yeah. And actually went. Selves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Good evening!